Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another episode of my Makeup Declutter Marathon. In today's video, I'll be putting my eyeshadow palette collection and declutter into one long video. So I think this is going to be like three to almost four hours long, I think. So your first half of the video, you're going to see my entire in-depth collection. The second half of the video, you guys are going to see my entire declutter of my entire eyeshadow palette collection. So I just want to let people know, because some people might be like, this is just a collection video. The declutter is going to be halfway through. I just want to show my collection first, followed by the declutter. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. I love doing makeup declutter marathons. They're so much fun. You guys seem to really enjoy them. I really enjoy watching them. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the video. Okay, so this drawer right here is my entire Glam Light cosmetic store. I own pretty much every single one of Glam Light's palettes, and it all fits in this drawer because it doesn't really fit in my collection because I do keep the unicartons because they are so freaking pretty. So let me go ahead and show you guys this collection. Okay, so up first, I do have the Glam Light. This is the Pie Palette. Now, this palette was actually found recently in their foodie box. This is such a fun palette. I actually think I got it in a foodie box, if I'm correct. I don't remember, but I remember just being so in love with this. Such a cute, cute palette. I really wish like Glam Light would kind of bring back the days when they used to make food-themed palettes. I know a lot of people out there were not fans of it, but there's also a lot of people that were fans of it. I'm a massive fan of it, and I just really wish that they would bring these back because these were so much fun. I used to do videos dedicated to the food reviews, and I would buy the food to match the palette and I just I miss those moments up next we have the donut palette this is such a, like a beautiful beautiful like neutral palette like look at how pretty these are I remember I got a chocolate donut this was actually featured in the last foodie box that came out not this past year but the one that came out like in 2021 this was the last palette that was featured in there and that was the last time I did the foodie box and I'm just so glad to see them bringing it back. But look at how cute this palette is. Still love this. So you can tell this is my favorite shade in that palette. All right, we have the Glam Light Burger palette. Look at how cute this is. Like what? I love that it comes like a little burger sleeve. Like Glam Light was always very innovative when it came to their packaging. It's why I kept everything. But here we have the little burger palette. Now this one isn't as aesthetically pleasing as some of their other palettes in their collection, but this was still a lot of fun to play with. And I know that their formula has changed over the years. It's actually improved. This was so good for what it was, but I know that now their, their formula has improved even more, but like this was so much fun. And I seriously, Think that this packaging is just the cutest. Have another donut palette. You know, so funny is I remember when this palette actually launched, I was actually at work at Disney. I ran to the bathroom to order this palette and it is still so pretty. This brings back so many memories of me playing with the Glam Light Donut Palette. Such a beautiful, iconic one for me. I have the Glam Light Streak Taco Palette and this came in another foodie box. Like this is such a cute little palette. Now I will say the only problem I noticed with Sam with Glam Light's older palettes is they do tend to have a little bit of oil or like, I guess oil seepage. I don't know what else to call it, but I noticed like some of my palettes do have a little bit of oil stain and I'm just going to chalk it up to like a grease stain. <laughs> Get it? You know, taco palette grease, you know. Anywho, trying to be funny, <laughs> but this is still such a really cute palette. Ah, the memories. Up next, I do have the Dirty Martini palette. This is still one of my favorite palettes with Glam Light. I'm absolutely obsessed with the color of this. This is a true, like, beautiful green eyeshadow palette. And if anybody knows, and if everybody, if, and if you guys know, you guys know that I'm a huge fan of green eyeshadow. Like, it's one of my favorites to work with. I just absolutely love this palette. Super fun. I did a whole video on this, actually, the whole collection. Actually, I did a whole video on pretty much every single one of these palettes. All you guys have to do is just look up Glam Light and Allie Dawson together and you'll see my entire list of all my Glam Light palettes that I reviewed, swatched, and did tutorials on. Up next, I do the Glam Light Wine Palette. Now, I don't really use this palette that often because it is a lot of purples, and I'm just not the biggest fan of working with purples and reds, but still really, 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 really beautiful palette. Up next, we have the Chocolate Martini Palette, though I'm more of an espresso martini person myself, but we do the Chocolate Martini. Now, I was actually taking... I was actually taken by surprise when playing with this palette because this is a beautiful, beautiful neutral palette. And I was so surprised with how much I actually really ended up loving this palette. I did rank this pretty high when I did my palette ranking, I think in like 2022, very highly ranked because this is such a beautiful palette. And I still go to this when I need like a good neutral moment. 
Up next we do have the Martini palette. This to me is a really fun like springy summer palette. It actually kind of reminds me of like the ColourPop um, Malibu Barbie palette, but like this is so pretty, perfect for the spring. I love the bright colors and I just think it's really, really fun. I don't know if it really screams Martini, I don't know if it really does scream Margaritas, but I will say it's a really pretty palette and I definitely had a lot of fun playing with this one. Up next, we do have the Glam Light. This is the Red Velvet Cupcake Palette. Again, look at how cute the packaging is. They always went above and beyond when it came to their packaging. So here's the Red Velvet. This doesn't really scream Red Velvet to me with like the color scheme, but I will say this is a really, really beautiful palette. I remember this being like the only thing they launched in that collection, I think besides like a lipstick. Very cute, very fun, and this was uh, just a really fun video for me to play with. This was just a really fun review for me because I got to have a red velvet cupcake and those are one of my favorites. Up next, we have one of the Hershey Kisses Club. I actually got to go to LA for this launch party and I'll never forget just being flown out there. Glamlight took such good care of me, so I will always have such a special place in my heart for the Hershey Kisses collection. So here we have the Cookies and Cream. This is such a beautiful, beautiful palette. This is actually one of my favorite candy bars from Hershey's, is their Cookies and Cream and their Almond are my only two ones that I actually eat because I love it so much, but I will say this is a beautiful, beautiful blue eyeshadow palette, and this was just so much fun participating in the launch, doing the review. I got to go to the hotel. I got to like have my whole bed covered in like Hershey Kisses. It was like the best moment. So here we have the Hershey Kisses. This is the milk chocolate with almonds palette. This is actually kind of what I mixed with my, what I wore for my look at the event. I mixed this palette with the milk chocolate palette and I just really, really, really loved how this looks. Like look at how cute. Here is the milk chocolate palette. I mean, just look at how beautiful that is. Very beautiful. Love the little, extra touches to this, so fun. Then we have the special dark palette. So here's a special dark palette. Followed by the Lava Cake Kisses. And this is a beautiful pink palette. I will say this shade right here was so fun to play with. Up next, I do have the two Icy palettes. Now, fun fact about these palettes is that I got these um, it was either 2020, I think it was 2022. I got these and I was actually at a Christmas parade. So I had been drinking, having a great time. So when these got delivered, I was a little toasty. And then I did this makeup review and I remember I went and got an Icy and I sang karaoke and I talked about 90 throwbacks going to like the roller skating ring. So I will have fun memories with this collection because of that. But I will say this is super, super, super cute. The lipstick did come in like a little like slurry cup. Very, very fun to play with this collection. So here we have the blue raspberry palette followed by the um, cherry palette. So if you guys wanna go watch me just be a little tipsy and watch me just sing karaoke, and do 90 throwbacks, then you guys should definitely go watch the review on this because that was actually a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with that review and this just holds a special memory in my heart because of that. I mean, like, I'm not kidding. I rushed home from the parade to specifically review this collection. Up next, we do the Michaela Part 2 palette. This is the 10 color story palette. I will say the outside packaging on this is so freaking pretty. It's like a nice little velvet. And then you open it up and you're gonna have these beautiful shades right here. Now the Michaela actually did a really great job with this collection. I really loved this palette. I love playing with it. I still go into it a lot if I wanted to just like a nice little like um, mint moment. This is still a really beautiful iconic palette and I'm still like really beautiful iconic palette and this was just a lot of fun to work with. I'm still very happy I have this palette. Up next we do have these two palettes from Glamlight. These are their Hershey, these are the Hershey's um, Milk Bar collection. So this is their round two. This is what they created with their second collaboration. So here we just have the Milk Chocolate palette. Super cute. I love that it has the Hershey's in print in the shadows. It definitely looks like a little Hershey bar. So here's the Milk Chocolate followed by the Cookies and Cream. This is a beautiful, beautiful palette. I definitely recommended this during my ranking of my Christmas palettes. I think this is the perfect palette to use during the Christmas season. Very, very fun to play with. We have our first horror theme palette. This is the Chucky Crazy in Love. This actually came out last year. This actually came out at the beginning of 2023 for like their Valentine's Day collection, which I thought was so fun. They did a Lentacular Motion palette, very cute. And this is the color story right here. It's very dark, very grungy. And I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this palette until I actually played with it, but I really love the eye look that I created. The formula in here is incredible. And this is kind of what launched their horror series. And I'm still just 
I love this. And you can actually find this palette at your local CVS because now this is being sold inside CVS. So congratulations to them. We have the two Nightmare on Elm Street palettes. So let's start off with this one here. This is the Freddy Krueger palette. I love the Lynn Tackler Motion palette. Super freaking pretty. And when you open up, I just love this grungy, grungy color story. I love a good green grungy color story. There's something about it that is just so pretty. I absolutely love the eye look that I created when playing with this. And I loved playing with, and I loved doing this review because I was doing one, two, Freddy's coming for you. So much fun. Very, very, very gorgeous collection. Then we have the Dream Master palette. Like seriously, look how cute that is. Now, this is gonna be like a red eyeshadow theme palette. Now, I don't really care for red eyeshadows. I did like the eye look that I created, but I'm still gonna stand by what I say when I say that I'm just not the biggest fan of using reds. I just, I, I don't know. Something about it I just don't like, but I will say this is a beautiful, beautiful color story, and um, I think they did a great job with the outside packaging as well. Yo, this is the Garfield palette. I just reviewed this this past week, and this palette took me by surprise. This is the latest palette that Glamite has launched, and I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this palette, but honestly, first of all, the packaging is so freaking cute, but the color story, oh my gosh, it is such a gorgeous color story. This is like an I this is like my idea of like a beautiful fall palette. I will absolutely be ranking this next year in my top 10 fall inspired palettes because this is truly gorgeous. I loved the eye look that I created when playing this. The formula is top notch. And this truly took me by surprise. I generally didn't know what to expect when playing this collection, but I was thoroughly impressed with how amazing this collection actually was. We have the two Scooby-Doo Rut Row palettes. So here is the Rut Row palette. This is kind of what started Glamlight's first ever Lentacular Motion palettes where they switch like this. Their highlighter was a Lentacular 3D Motion highlighter palette. And that's what kind of kicked off their whole Lentacular feel. So freaking cool but here we have the rut row palette right here this is a beautiful color story i had so much fun playing this palette i think they definitely hit the mark when it came to the scooby-doo feel and this was just so much fun and this is truly such an aesthetically pleasing eyeshadow palette i love it then we have the creeps and crawls palette Again, another beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow palette. This is perfect for Halloween. I did rank these pretty high in my Halloween collection. Beautiful color story. I think Glamour did such a good job when creating the Scooby-Doo collection. First time I saw this, this actually came out last Christmas. First time I saw this, I was like, oh, strawberry shortcake. And then I thought of the ice cream, but I forget that this is actually a character. So here we have the Berrylicious palette. It's cute. Definitely not one of my favorite Glamite palettes. This came out last year for the holidays and I just didn't feel the Christmas vibe with this. She's cute, she has really pretty colors, but I think it's more like spring than anything else. But I also don't really know Strawberry Shortcake. I just know the ice cream personally. So I didn't have too much of a connection with this, but I will say it's a cute palette, but not my favorite. There we are. We have another Scooby-Doo palette. This is the Scooby-Doo 25 color eyeshadow palette. The palette is so freaking pretty. Definitely perfect for like the summer and spring season. Very beautiful color story. Very, very easy to work with. And I just, I had a great time with this. I wish it didn't have as much space between every single shadow, but still a lot of fun and very heavy palette as well. We have the Rick and Morty eyeshadow palette. This actually sold out and I believe they actually brought it back to stock on the TikTok shop. So if you guys want to go check it out, um, this was limited edition, but I know they did bring it back. I've also heard people say they found some of this palette inside of uh, TJ Maxx and Marshalls. So you guys might want to, inside TJ Maxx, you guys might want to check there. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous eyeshadow palette. Very, very heavy though, because of this big old mirror. But I had so much fun playing with this palette. I absolutely love the eye look that I created when using this. Very, very beautiful. We have Glamlight Friday the 13th. This is the Camp Crystal Lake. First off, I love the packaging. It comes in like this classic VHS style Packaging, super freaking cute. And then the color story, I really, really loved like the swamp vibes that are in this color story. So much fun to play with. I really love the eye look that I created when using this palette. I loved this row in particular. The shadows performed very beautifully and it just gives me like these beautiful swamp vibes. Plus the outside Lentacular Motion palette, again, super freaking cute. And the packaging alone is just amazing. And of course, we can't get that can't forget the iconic ghost face palette. So this is the ghost face palette. And this is a beautiful cool tone gray color eyeshadow palette. I know a lot of people are upset that they didn't get any reds in here, but obviously she delivered reds with like her Freddy collection, but I will say this was a lot of fun. I really love the smoky gray eye look that I created with this. Very fun palette, and I think they did a good job with this one. Up next, we have the Viva Taco palette. Look at the packaging, super freaking cute open it up and you are going to have just this adorable packaging with adorable palette and then the color store on the inside 
definitely isn't my favorite anymore. It's my, my tastes have definitely evolved. You could also tell if you compare this to other Glam Light palettes, how the formula has changed. Also this shade right here. Oh, okay, I thought that was cracking, just a line. You can see that the shimmers in here are not nearly as vibrant and as creamy and buttery as the new formula is. Like I said, Glam Light did reformulate their shadows, so their shimmers are just on a whole new creamy, buttery level. But even though these are not the same type of shimmers, they still performed really, really nicely. They did have such a beautiful, beautiful consistency to them, and I had so much fun playing with these palettes. They're great! This is the Frosted Flakes palette. First off, super cute packaging, but then you have Tony the Tiger and this adorable, adorable color story again you guys see how bright and vibrant those shimmers are compared to the taco one that is what i mean beautiful color story a lot of fun playing with this collection and i just think it's gorgeous up next we do have these two pizza slice palettes y'all this was the first palette i ever owned from glam light the very first one so here we have this is the um I think this is the veggie lover pizza this is the veggie lover one so you open it up this is the color story right here and i do have a shadow breaking right here it's just bound to happen so i'm gonna kind of hold it this way but you guys can see lackluster shimmers but they still work really nicely but this is one of the first palettes i ever got introduced to glam light i actually got this in a glam light mystery box and when i tried these i fell in love with a brand and went and bought everything else that they had at that time but is this not so cute uh I will always hold on to these even if i never use them again these will go into like a shadow box eventually because these are like i said the very first palettes i ever owned from glam light and i will always have the most cherished memories with these pizza lover palettes here we have the meat lover so here's the meat lover palette again super cute look at the shape right like so cute oh my god i love this palette so here's the burger palette you open it up and again such an iconic moment. Love it, love it, love it. I love the review that I did for this palette. I actually went and got a Big Mac from McDonald's for this review. Now, I will say, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this entire area right here is covered in that like oil mess. I don't know what that is, but if I turn it there, you guys can see. You guys see that? That is all oil. It's bound to happen. This palette is pretty old, I would say, since like 2019, I believe, is when I got this palette. But again, very, very, very beautiful. Brings back such great memories for me. I love how big and fluffy it is. And this palette actually put Glam Light on the map. Nikki Tutorials and Jeffree Star reviewed this palette. And this is what got Glam Light in the spotlight, got Glam Light seen. And it's just, I hope she cherishes this palette because it really put them on the map. Then we have the Glam Light Pizza palette. Again, I like to keep all of these packagings because it just is such an iconic moment. I love these, love these, love these. So we have the pizza palette right here open it up and this is the pizza color story this is a little lackluster in color story i think glam light has definitely improved their color story and themes overall but i will say for what it was it was really cute at the time i had fun playing with this and so i will definitely always cherish this even though i do think this palette now is ugly compared to so many other palettes out there we have the alondra desi palette from glam light this is one of their first palettes they rolled out with there's one more palette that was right before this that i actually do not have it's the only glam light palette that I do not have. I'll quickly flash on the screen so you guys know what that palette is, but I do own every single other one. So this is the Alondra Desi, Desi palette. This was her first collaboration that she did with somebody. Very beautiful palette. Um, this is before they start to venture off and become what they are today. This was right after they, be, that's, this is right after they did their ring lights when Glam Light first started. Very beautiful. And uh, I, like I said, I kind of wish I had that first palette they launched because this is the second one and it's just so pretty. Up next, we have Michaela Part 2 palette. Really pretty outside coloring. And then you open the inside. This is the color story. Very beautiful. Had a lot of fun playing with this palette. She did a good job. We have the first Michaela palette right here. Again, very, very pretty outside packaging. And the color story on the inside is just as gorgeous. Very, very beautiful. Then we have the Glam Light Barbie palette. Fun fact about this palette, they actually sent this palette to me right as a hurricane was hitting Florida. So I literally reviewed this before we were getting hit with the before we were getting hit with the hurricane. And uh, I laughed because like, and before we got hit with the hurricane, because like legit, there was a hurricane that was coming right at us. And I think that was like in 2022. And uh, legit, I rushed to get this review up so quickly because there was that hurricane barreling down and Glam I got this to me right beforehand. And this was like right at the beginning of October, right during my Vlogmas 
my Vlogoween series in. So I'll always remember this palette as like the palette that I rushed up during a hurricane and then just like waited to see what would happen. Up next we do the cake palette. Now I'll never forget this palette because I got this while I was running food at work. And I'll never forget that one of my coworkers, she quit right then and there on the spot. So they desperately needed me to be on the floor running food to guests. But I could not miss this launch. I ran to the bathroom and I got this launch and I was like, screw the guests, I can't miss this, miss this palette. And I remember I told that story in this video and I will always have a special place in my heart for this. We have the Glam Light Pro Paint Palette. I love this palette. So freaking cute. Love the packaging, love the design. And this was a lot of fun to play with. This is the sister to the paint palette. Again, you guys can see a little oil spread right there. It happens, but this was so unique. This is what I mean. I wish Glam Light would bring stuff like this back because this was a lot of fun. Love this palette. Here we have the ice cream palette and fun fact about this palette, this is the first palette that Glamlight ever, this was the first palette that Glamlight ever gifted to me in PR and they didn't necessarily gift it to me, they gave me a gift card to go purchase it, but still it's a gift. This was, so this was the first like PR moment for me when it came to Glamlight was this palette right here because it gave me a gift card so I was able to afford the entire collection and I still just, oh my God, I love it, I love it, I love it. I'll always have a special place in my heart for this. The packaging is so cute. And lastly for Glam Light, we do have the pink palette right here. Now with this palette, oh my God, y'all, this palette right here, I did two videos on. I did a um, video where I tried out this palette and then I did a year later, I recreated that look using this palette to see if I could do it better. Maybe I should do that again because the first time I ever did a look with this palette, oh my God, it was horrible. Don't go look it up. But the second time I thought I killed it, but I feel like I could do even more of a better job now. So I might actually recreate that video one more time. Video to see three years later, did my skills approve over the last three years compared to what it was the last time I re recreated looks. So if you guys wanna go see those videos, I will link them for you. They're enjoyable, they're funny, and oh my God, are they atrocious. All right, so I just counted I had 45 Glam Light palettes. I actually did a ranking a long time ago, ranking all of my Glam Light, order, Glam Light palettes from my least favorite to my top favorite. So you guys want to see me redo that ranking now that I have 45 palettes? Let me know. I'm happy to do that at the beginning of the year. Now let's move on to my palettes that I keep like in my everyday makeup drawer, even though they're not like everyday makeup drawer, but I keep all of my like Lunar Beauty, my Laura Los Angeles, my Jaclyn Cosmetics, all up in these drawers. So let me go ahead and show you guys all of these palettes. Okay, so up first, some of these drawers, I do have my Tati Beauty palette. Do you see how like destroyed this palette is? I actually did have a backup palette because I bought two at the time when this launched. And then I actually sent my palette over to Manny MUA because he never had the palette. So I sent it, sent it over to him so now he has that version. But here we have my Tati Beauty palette. You guys can see that I hit pan on this shade. I really loved that shade back in the day. Very beautiful and I was so sad to see we couldn't get our hands on the second palette because when she showed volume two, it was absolutely gorgeous. And I really wish she could have continued her brand because I really loved, 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 loved this palette. So here is the Tati Beauty palette. Very much well loved, but no longer no longer existing. I have the Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is the Whimsical Nude Collection. Such a beautiful collection. I did rank this in my Christmas holiday palette. Really, really fun playing with this. Very beautiful. I have the little Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is the Party Animal Palette. Super cute. Definitely out of the norm for Laura to have a colorful palette like this, but really cute. We have the Laura Lee. This is the Boss Babe Palette. Super, super cute. Super cute. Up next, we do have the Full Fantasy Moment. This is a palette with Laura Lee and Manny MUA. This is their Lunar Beauty X Laura Lee Los Angeles collaboration. Super, super cute palette. Definitely screams both of them. <laughs> it screams both of them. I have this random Laura Lee Los Angeles like magnetic palette. This is like with all of her singles that she created. Mine is two of the highlighter shades that Teresa created with uh, Lethal Cosmetics. But here we have a little bit of Laura single shadows right there have the Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is the Nudie Patootie palette. Such a cute palette. I never had a chance to review this, but it's such a cute, cute palette. Here we have the Nudie Volume 2 palette. This is the second palette from the Nudie Patootie line. And I will say this is such a gorgeous palette. I absolutely loved, 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 loved this palette. Then we have this gorgeous Candy Skies palette from Laura Lee and Erin Weaver, her niece. This is so pretty, definitely up my alley. I think they did such a fantastic job with this collection. Loved the color story, very, very beautiful. Then lastly, for Laura Lee Los Angeles, we do have the Cat's Pajamas palette. Oh my God, this is the first influencer palette I ever bought. And I will say, 
I mean, the color story is okay, but this is definitely a ugly eyeshadow palette in terms of packaging. Oh my God, it's ugly. She even says it's ugly too. It just doesn't make sense. But like, I mean, good for her for creating her own brand. But like at the same time, this was just not it. <laughs> I don't even think they sell this anymore, but definitely would be like a little bit of a keep moment for me, like little shadow box moment. Cause this is just, it's iconic. Okay, we are moving on to my Lunar Beauty collection. So up first, we do have the 12 Days of Lunar right here. This is a little advent calendar that Manny created. Still love this palette. I think it's so cool, so unique, and I really wish that like, he would do this again. And I wouldn't be surprised if other brands end up doing something like this. I wish the color story was just a little bit differently, but I will say this was such a fun palette. Then we have this beautiful Siren Sunset palette. This is so gorgeous. At first, when I saw the pictures of this, I was not wowed. I was like, uh, I don't really know. But then I played with it and I was like, oh my God, this is absolutely stunning. Manny really killed it when he created this palette. Love the little dual chromes he has in here. I love the eye look I created and I truly became obsessed. So here is a beautiful Siren Sunset palette. Even the back is just, it's a moment. We have the Strawberry Dreams palette right here. And oh my God, y'all, I hated the eye look that I created in this video. It was horrible absolutely horrible and how I let myself be on camera with this eye look is just beyond me so I just definitely have like a soft spot in my heart for this palette because of that but this is still really pretty really really pretty palette so here we have the nude prism palette this is by far my absolute favorite palette from Lunar Beauty I just love the color story in here. The formula is incredible. I create really easy everyday eye looks. There's oil like literally all over this palette. Um, I don't know how much you can tell but it is such a great formula. These shimmers in here, oh my God, they are truly beautiful. I absolutely love this palette. It's my favorite one from the brand. Up next, we have the Eternal Eclipse palette. And what I really love about this palette is that this palette, when I reviewed it, is the palette that when I did this video, I talked about Avatar The Last Airbender in that video. And that was the first time Manny has ever commented on any of my videos. And this is kind of what started our friendship was this particular review right here. And I'm just... I'll always have a special place in my heart for this palette. Super freaking pretty. And outside packaging, hello. Here we have um, Life is a Drag facelift palette. This is actually the first palette that Lunar Beauty actually ever gifted to me in PR. I will always love this palette because I remember just the first time Manny reached out and said, hey, can we send this to you? I was like, wait, what? Such a cool moment and I love that shade Full Fantasy. It's almost at pan at this point, but really, really, really beautiful. And this took place of the Life's a Drag palette, and this was the facelift, super cool. Here we have the Life is a Drag palette, which you guys can no longer get, sadly, but this is the first palette I ever owned from Lunar Beauty. I never did a review on this palette because I just wasn't sure how to really do reviews at that time, so I just didn't do it, but it is very, 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 very beautiful. We have the Moonspell palette. I still love this palette. I still love the intro that I did for this review. And this is still just a really cute like Halloween moment palette. Very beautiful. Manny did such a good job when creating the Moonspell palette. I enjoy it. We have the Moonspell volume two palette. Now this one is not nearly as pretty as the first one because it's all pinks, reds, and purples. Definitely a color scheme that I tend to stay away from, but it's cute. I have fun reviewing this, but it's not my favorite. And lastly, we have the Greek Goddess palette right here. This palette, again, has been discontinued. This is actually the first palette I ever reviewed for Luna Beauty. This is where I found my love for the Aphrodite Red Liquid Lip. And uh, the reason why it came back is because, well, Lord knows I harassed him about it for years. But I still will always have a special place in my heart for this palette. But what is this? Um, something's happening right here. What is that? Do you guys see that? What? is that I have never seen that before um I have not opened this palette since the last time I did an eyeshadow palette collection review since I did an eyeshadow palette collection video um no but for real though what is that maybe that's just glue right it's it looks like oil it looks like oil seeping out please don't be anything other than that is that I mean this palette is like five years old. I don't want to touch it because I don't know what that is, but if you guys let me know what that is in the comment section, we can go from there. Um, maybe it's just oil, maybe it's just glue that's finally coming undone. I don't know, but I've never seen that before in one of my palettes. Okay, well, there's some right here too, but this one's hard. We're gonna 
gonna say that it's glue. We're gonna say it's glue. Y'all just let me know what that is because I've never seen that before. See, this is why it's cool to have a big eyeshadow palette collection, but this is also why it's not cool to have a big eyeshadow palette collection. And lastly, from these drawers, we do have the Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the Strawberry Palette, I think. Strawberry Feels Palette. Um, it's okay. It's cute. Not the best formula, not the best color story, but it's okay. And we have the Dear Mom Palette. I mean, it's cute. I love the concept of it. I really, really do. And the color story, it's all right. Again, not my favorite, but definitely... All right, it performs well. It just reminds me a lot of Morphe's formula, if I'm gonna be honest with you guys, but um, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to my, F and now we're gonna move on to my actual like palette collection. So this right here, we're going to ignore this drawer right here. That's where I just throw in all my new makeup, but let's go ahead and we're gonna get this started. So I'm gonna start off with this drawer right over here. Up first, I have the brand new Gourmand Girls collaboration with Doodles by The Bunny. This is the Silent Night palette. I just got this in, so I'm definitely gonna be doing like a chit chat, get ready with me trying out this palette. I do have a code if you guys wanna save 10% off, but it is a really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Christmas palette, and it just launched. Here we have the Falling in Love palette with Ofer Cosmetics collaboration with Allie Dawson. That's me. This is my absolute favorite palette. I really had the best time creating this palette. It truly was one of one, it truly was a like it truly was such a moment in my life one that i'll never forget this would be something that i would cherish for the rest of my life and you guys truly made the launch very iconic for me so yeah i will always 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 love this palette up next we do have the ofra this is the luxe palette super beautiful like super beautiful neutral palette. I really, really do enjoy this one. Up next, we do have the Ofra Empowered palette right here. Very, very beautiful palette. This is actually kind of what's kicked off my Project Influencer because I was gonna do this palette, but <sighs> I still love it. Up next, we have the Beachside palette with Ofra. This is super cute, really fun for the summer season. I really enjoy this palette. We have the Fantasy Cosmetica. This is the Lost Library collection. These are individual holochrome single shadows and oh my god these are absolutely stunning i mean like seriously such stunning 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 shadows up next we have what's up beauty this is going to be the dragon eye palette i loved the outside packaging now the inside color story definitely very underwhelmed me because it just doesn't match what the outside packaging looks like but when i played with this palette i fell in love with it because i was able to create beautiful eye looks because they have multi crumbs in here that just worked out so nicely really 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 ended up enjoying this palette and i can't express enough how much i love the outside packaging up next, we do have the Ofer Cosmetics. This is the Allie Dawson Project Influencer Palette. Now I created this palette essentially, but like I just picked ex existing shades and I put it together in one palette. I really do love this palette. I think it's still perfect for the, sum the summer season. This just kind of represented my love for pastels, summer, beaches, Florida. I had a lot of fun with this palette. And it's so cool because like my name's on the back. Up next, we do have the Essence. This is the Lion King palette, and I love the way the color story turned out in this palette. If anybody knows me, they know that I absolutely love Disney. It doesn't help that I worked there for almost 12 years, but I lived and breathed Disney my whole life, and I just love anything Disney. So when Essence sent this over, I was like, okay, cool. But the palette and the formula really took me by surprise. Very, very, very beautiful. Up next, we do have the Wicked Widow. This is the Graveyard Smash palette, and this is a really, really, really cute palette. I didn't really get a chance to feature it too much on my channel, but I Anyways, I will say it's super cute. I definitely want to show it off at some point soon because it deserves to have its moment, but I really, really like this. Up next, we have this beautiful Floraces palette. Can we talk about how gorgeous this packaging is? I mean, like, seriously, it is a beautiful, stunning palette. I mean, look at the design. I was blown away. Now, the formula is very light, so it's more for like a very light, minimalistic makeup look, but my gosh, is it beautiful. We have another Floraces palette. Again, look at just the details. The details in this packaging, so beautiful. Truly such a beautifully, a please, it's just truly such a beautiful palette. Like I'm always blown away with how gorgeous they do their shadows. Y'all, I can't express enough how much I love the Queen Bee palette from Color Rain. This is so freaking beautiful. I absolutely love this color story. Oh my God, this is ranked my number one for fall palettes, but then well, obviously when I created my own palette, then that kind of took place, but this still comes in number two. I can't get over how gorgeous this palette is. I also love bees, so I have a little soft spot for this. And it's just such a cute, cute, affordable palette too with great formula. Up next, we have another gorgeous palette from Floraces. Look at how gorgeous this is. I mean, my God, the designs. 
I'll never get over how beautiful these palettes truly are. Up next, I have the Chaotic Cosmetics. This is the Hydro Palette. This is a water activated liner palette. Super great to have whenever I wanna do something really fun and festive. You just dip a little bit of wet brush in here and use wet paint. It's great. My one and only palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is the Juicy Olive Palette. I really wanna get more from this brand because I still really love this palette. So freaking pretty. I have the Club Nebula Palette with Kaleidos. This is Angelica Nikfis's Club Nebula Palette. Speaking of Angelica, she's actually having a second launch today with her Singe Beauty brushes, which I'm so freaking excited about. She's launching her extended brush collection with Singe Beauty. I'm so excited for her. As soon as this brushes comes in, I would definitely show them off and talk to you guys all about it because I'm way too excited. But this is her collaboration with Kaleidos. Very beautiful palette. Up next, we have my Odin Eye Cosmetics. So this is the Flora Stories Palette. This is the makeup just for fun collaboration with Odin Eyes. I really love this palette. So freaking beautiful. Perfect for the spring season. This is my beautiful, beautiful friend, Miss Betty Jeans. This is the Planet Spirit palette. This is again, another gorgeous, fun color story. Betty Jean creates really beautiful eye looks, creates really beautiful color stories when she has palette collaborations. I'm so excited for her, but like legit, this is absolutely beautiful. Then we have the Lauren May Beauty. This is the Sea Talk palette. Again, very beautiful, beautiful palette. Love this. We have this little mini eyeshadow palette. This is the Erd palette from like the Norm collection, like the Norse collection, I believe. This is such a beautiful, beautiful palette. It's one of the first palettes that Odin's actually gifted to me. Love this. Now, if you guys did not know, Odin Eyes created their own individual shadows. So I did kind of create my own custom palette. I still have more shades I haven't shown off because I need to get another magnetic palette, but look at how beautiful this is. And this one as well. I need to buy another empty magnetic one so I can put the rest of the shades on display. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this palette that Annette's Makeup Corner created. First off, wolves are my absolute favorite animals in the entire world. I have multiple wolf tattoos on my body. I go to wolf, I've gone to wolf conservations to go camping with wolves, learn about them. I donate nonstop to a wolf wildlife preservation. I'm all about the wolves. So when Annette came out with this, I had to have it, but this is also a beautiful color story. I mean, like seriously, Ah, I'm so jealous she got to create something so beautiful. Very, very gorgeous. I'm so happy for her. This is one of my favorites with Odin's because I'm just biased towards wolves. We have the Red Dragon palette. This is with collaboration with Judy. Another beautiful, beautiful palette. All those creators like that, that get to collaborate with Odin's, they are so lucky. These are so freaking cool. Like imagine like having like your face like on a palette. Like how cool is that? Then we do have the Hummingbird palette. This is in collaboration with Tina the Fancy Face. Again, another beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow palette. We have this really beautiful Saga of Freya palette. Like, look at how pretty this is. I love the color story. So I had to keep this one. I had a lot more Odin Eye cosmetic palettes, but I actually did declutter them in my last declutter because I just knew that I had a lot and I definitely had to pass I had to pass them on that weren't being used ever. So up next, we do have the Stone and Rocks palette. Oh my gosh, guys. This palette is just truly so beautiful. I love the color story. I love the formula. Absolutely fantastic. Really pretty. We have the Jewels and Gem palette. I still love that palette right there. So freaking beautiful. We have the Solomon Volume 2 eyeshadow palette. I love the outside packaging and the color story on the inside is just truly beautiful. Remember this sold out and they finally were able to bring it back in stock. And of course we have my favorite Christmas palette. This is the Merry Christmas palette. This has been sold out numerous times. I absolutely love, 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 love this palette. So this is my number one Christmas palette. And if you guys are able to get your hands on it, I highly recommend you guys do so. Another gorgeous Christmas palette. This is the Christmas Eve palette. Again, so freaking beautiful. Oh my God, do I love these palettes so much. We have the Snow Dream palette. This is a beautiful like pastel Christmas palette. This just launched a couple weeks ago. I absolutely love this palette. Very beautiful, perfect in time for the Christmas season. Of course, we have this really cute Hey Reindeer palette. I love the outside packaging. Inside color story reminds me more of like a spring palette. Personally, formula works great, but I didn't really get the Christmas vibes from this palette minus just the outside packaging, but it was definitely a lot of fun to play with. Of course, we have the beautiful Trick or Treat palette. This is in collaboration with my beautiful friend Angelica Neekfist. Look at how gorgeous this out. Look at how gorgeous this palette is. Really beautiful Halloween palette. Love the outside packaging and the color story on the inside is really, really, really beautiful. 
We have the little ghost palette right here with Angelica Nikvis. Again, another gorgeous palette. These just launched this past year for Halloween. Beautiful, fun. I had a lot of fun creating looks with this palette and I'm very proud of her. This is awesome. And then lastly, for my Odin eye drawers, we do have the Hella palette. This is Angelica's first collaboration. First off, I love the outside packaging, black and gray. And then you take that off. You're going to have a beautiful color story on the inside. I did to be a little bit careful because when I got this palette, that one shade right there did come in broken. It is what it is, but still such a fun, fun, gorgeous palette. Up next, we do have this beautiful abscission palette from Artitude Cosmetic. Artitude Cosmetic. This is such a beautiful, cool tone fall inspired palette. Really had a fun, really had a lot of fun playing this palette. Really, really like this indie brand. Up next, we do have the Resurgence palette. This is in collaboration with Heather Austin and Unearthly Cosmetics. Beautiful, beautiful palette. I loved playing this palette because I talked about like the mummy. <laughs> Great palette. I love Heather and she did such a beautiful job with this collection. We have the Don't Be Jelly palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. I never had a chance to actually review this for you guys, but I will say it's a beautiful color story. I really do like Unearthly's formula. They have some great products and make really cool looking palettes, especially palettes geared towards like Halloween. I really enjoy that. We have the Rebel Rouge Labs. This is the Howlin' For You palette. I love this little indie brand right here. Super cute. They make really fun halloween inspired palettes i mean like look at how gorgeous this palette is definitely a lot of fun and when i review this palette i talked about the history of halloween and i just will always have a soft spot in my place a soft, soft spot in my heart for this palette because it just brings back such great memories so we have the um unearthly cosmetics not normal palette i know it says alien cosmetics but they did rebrand but this is such a beautiful stunning palette this is one of the palettes that like I know is really coveted by Unearthly. Whenever this comes back in stock, it tends to sell out rather quickly, but I will say this is such a beautiful color story and I love the formula in this palette. We have the Witching Hour palette from again, Unearthly Cosmetics. Is this not beautiful? I don't think they'd make this one anymore, honestly, but I had so much fun when I reviewed this palette and played with it and it's always ranked pretty decently well in my Halloween palette ranking because it looks like a perfect Halloween palette to me. So we have the Creatures of Forever eyeshadow palette by Rebel Rouge Labs. Again, and they do such a good job with their cute little packaging. And this is like, I think 1980s throwback to Halloween. Super freaking cute. I love that shade right here called Ancient Evil. This is really stunning. A lot of fun to play with. I really enjoy this palette. We have the Tiny Marvels palette. This is actually Mel Thompson's palette with Sydney Grace. And unfortunately, Mel Thompson did pass away. So I will always hold a special place in my heart for this palette. It is very, very, very beautiful. And um, I think Mel did such a good job with this palette. We have the Makeup Maniacs. This is the Boo Thing palette. Super cute little fun Halloween palette. Definitely not the best, best, definitely not the best formula out there, but I had a lot of fun with this palette. We have the Haunted palette. This is another um, Gourmand Girls collaboration with Doodles by the Bunny. Again, this is a beautiful, stunning Halloween palette. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. I think they did such an incredible job creating this gorgeous Halloween palette. We have another Gourmand Girls Doodle by the Bunny palette. This is the Spooked palette. Oh my God, this is still one of my favorite Halloween palettes. They just kill it every time with this palette. It truly hits every single color I look for when it comes to a Halloween palette. It's ranked number one for two years now, and I just... I love it. Then we have the Nightshade palette. This is Do Doodle by the Bunny again with Gourmand Girls. Again, another gorgeous like Poison Ivy style palette. Very beautiful. They killed it with the color story and the formula is just so damn good. We have the Lethal Cosmetics collaboration with Teresa is Dead. This is the Lethal is Dead palette. I know how hard Teresa worked on this palette. She created such a gorgeous color story with a gorgeous, she created such a gorgeous color story. I absolutely loved playing with this palette. I think Teresa puts a lot of love into the names, into the colors, and she truly just is a fantastic person. And I just absolutely love her palettes that she created with Lethal Cosmetics. Here we have Teresa is Lethal. I'm really hoping that one day Teresa can do a third collaboration with them because she's kind of like telling a story. This is like the hot older sister to the Teresa to the Lethal is Dead. I I love this one. It is so beautiful. We have um, Murky Waters by Ladybug Glow Cosmetics. Very beautiful palette. I will say the shimmers in here are really creamy. Definitely took me by surprise. We have my Batty Bean It's Freaking Bats palette, but mine is starting to break a lot. I don't know really what's going on. Um, these are breaking so easily now. They're not squished in my collection. They're not hot. They're not put anywhere where they can get ruined. So I don't really know. I've had this for, uh, I think, a couple of years now. And um, I don't want to see it go, but 
it's really starting to break and I'm kind of sad about that because I love Betty Jean and I love this palette. Even my hollow bean palette, I have to be kind of careful with because it's starting to break just a little bit. So I don't really know what's going on with this one, but I will say this is such a beautiful palette. Betty did the most amazing job creating this a gorgeous Halloween palette. Oh my God, I love it. So up next, we do have the little Nomad Air palette. This is supposed to be like a little travel palette. This is my least favorite palette from <laughs> Nomad Cosmetics. The color story is the formula is great. It's just, I don't know. It's just a kind of boring neutral palette. Like I just, they create such fun colorful palettes that to me, this was just a little bit of a disappointment, but at least the formula was really nice, but definitely not my favorite palette from them. I really loved this color story from NYX. This is the ultimate paradise shock palette. Oh my God. This really is a shock palette. The formula on this was so freaking good. I love the eye look that I created. I was generally really, really surprised because I haven't played with NYX shadows in a long time. So when I played with this, I was like, oh my God, definitely well worth it. But then I had the Flamingo. This is the ultimate Flamingo Frost palette. Then I played with this palette and I was like, what happened? The formula just wasn't what it was for the ultimate Paradise Shock. I don't know why the shimmers were a little bit more lackluster, didn't have as much pigment payoff. I don't know what happened. The mattes were still great, but the shimmers, I was like, what happened to this? So she's cute, but I was disappointed. Absolutely love the Mirage palette from Alter Ego. This is a dupe palette to the Huda Beauty Empowered palette. Loved the formula. This is a third of the cost with the same consistency as the Empowered, maybe even better than the Empowered. The shimmers are so creamy and buttery. The mattes are so pigmented. They blend out beautifully. I love Alter Ego's formula and this is just a really, really, really gorgeous palette. Now this is the Canon palette from Alter Ego. I never owned the bronze palette with Natasha Denona. So for me, this is a great, a dupe to it because I never owned that palette, but I will say this is a beautiful color story. Really had a lot of fun playing with this and this just replaces my lack of having the Natasha Denona bronze palette. So here is the Alter Ego Canon palette. We have the Sakura palette right here from Alter Ego. This is a great dupe to like the Natasha Denona retrogram plat palette. Um, really beautiful. Love the color story. Perfect for the spring season. So here we have the Gourmand Girls. This is the Warriors Wear Pink. This is an honor of breast cancer awareness. And the person she collaborated with actually was getting a percentage of the proceeds to help go towards her cancer treatment since she is fighting breast cancer. Very, very beautiful palette. We have the Alter Ego. This is the Goddess palette right here. And I will say this is, an, this is a dupe to the Natasha Denona Gold palette. I never owned that palette, but I really, really, really love this palette. It's one of my favorite palettes from Alter Ego. The color story in here is just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Really love this palette. We have the Endangered Cosmetics. This is the Sea Turtle Pressed Powder. This is the Sea Turtle palette. Y'all, I don't know what happened to this brand. They were doing so good creating palettes and every time I did a review on them, I did a whole video dedicated to the animal that they were representing on their palette and I also donated my AdSense from that video to the conservation cause. So I donated my AdSense from that video to the Sea Turtle Conservation and then the Red Panda palette one. And I don't know what happened to this brand. They said they're coming back, but I haven't seen anything. I really love their formula. I loved what they represented. I love supporting animals in any way, shape that I can. So I really hope this, I really hope this brand comes back because I really did enjoy this palette. I thought it was beautiful, great formula. And I just love the causes that they represent. I mean, look at how pretty the Red Panda palette is. Oh my gosh. Endangered Cosmetics, such a beautiful, beautiful brand. I really hope they come back. We have the Game Beauty Adventure palette. This was the only palette they actually had pressed glitter in their palette and then they heard the feedback and so they took it, took, then they heard the feedback and then never brought pressed glitter back again, which I thought was really great. Love the color story behind this. I love when gaming meets beauty because I'm an absolute big time gamer. I'm also a huge book reader, but I play video games literally every single day. It is a great pastime of mine and a great way to help relieve anxiety actually. So I love the fact that this brand created a whole line dedicated to gaming and makeup and this was their first palette called the Venture Palette. Very, very, very beautiful artwork. We have the Fantasy Palette by <laughs> Game Beauty. And again, another gorgeous blue icy tone palette. But the packaging, I mean, like seriously, look at that color story. Is that not the most gorgeous color story? I freaking love it. Then we do have the Game Beauty Victory Palette. Again, another beautiful packaging on the palette. And the color story is a lot of fun too. Really, really, really loved the color story in this one. Then we do have the Harbinger palette. Now this was their version of like a little Halloween palette. Love the outside packaging. Inside color story definitely wasn't my favorite color story, but it's still a really fun palette to work with nonetheless. Really enjoyed this one. 
And then we had the Game Beauty Cyberpunk palette. This palette had so much potential, but it was such a letdown. Formula in here just wasn't it. I did not like the formula. I did not like the eye look I created. I definitely had a difficult time with this palette. I did declutter it, but then I pulled it back out because the hoarder and me needed to have a complete set. So it did survive a declutter. She got tossed, but I pulled her back out last minute. But I will say I love the outside packaging, but the inside color story... No, the formula was not good on this one. All right, we have the Nomad Cosmetics. This is gonna be the Ghost Town palette. First off, look at how cute. And this is the inside color story. I absolutely loved, loved, loved playing with this palette. I love the color story. I love the formula on this one. Very, very, very beautiful cool tone Halloween-esque vibes palette. Then we have the Haunted Europe palette. Again, another cool little moment. And this is the color story on the inside, another gorgeous Halloween palette. I really enjoyed the review on this because I talked about vampires in New Orleans. Had a great time reviewing this palette. Really beautiful. It's probably one of my favorite palettes from Nomad Cosmetic because it's the Okavango Safari palette. And this is a beautiful like African inspired palette. And if you guys didn't know, I worked at Animal Kingdom for almost 12 years. So I have such a huge soft spot for this palette. I actually went and like reviewed this palette when I was at Animal Kingdom. Love the reel that I created. And I'll just always have such a special place in my heart for this one. Like even the outside unicarton you know, is so beautiful. Then we have the Nomad Royal Europe palette. The dual chromes and multi chromes in this palette, oh my god, are absolutely stunning. I love, love, love this palette. Very gorgeous color story, but those multi chromes and dual chromes, my gosh, you can't beat it. Then we have the Nomad. This is going to be the Cloud Forest palette. Now, what I do love about Nomad is that every single place that they represent, they do also donate 10% of their profits to the organization in the area. So, usually they give back to like local animal conservations or local or good local causes back to like the local people there and i just think that's absolutely fantastic i really do love that nomad always goes back at every single place they go and they give very thorough educated research on the area that they're visiting love it love it love it is the nomad this is their version of like a love and death palette so they're representing like the romeo and juliet area in venice in rome very beautiful color story life and death life and death we have the Nomad Paradise palette. Oh my God, beautiful palette. They actually went to Fiji for this. Ugh, gorgeous. We have the Nomad. This is the Snow Lodge palette. Look at how gorgeous this palette is. I actually ranked this pretty high in my Christmas palette ranking, by the way. Very beautiful color story, very beautiful formula. We have the Nomad. This is the Tokyo Japan palette. Look at how cute. So freaking cute. I love this color story. We have the Nomad. This is the Fire and Ice palette. Fun fact, this is actually the first palette I ever reviewed with Nomad, and this is when I fell in love with their formula. I also talked about my fear of gnomes, which they have featured right there. So very beautiful palette, and this is what made me fall in love with this brand. We have the Nomad Province palette right here. This is like a nice little spring palette, and what I love about this palette in particular is that 10% of the proceeds actually went to bee conservation and I absolutely love bees so I was so so excited and it's a beautiful colorful story great time great palette for spring we have the nomad American parks palette and so funny in this video I actually talked about all the people that disappear in the American parks like the national parks and then I talked about wendigos but instead of it being wendigos I kept saying winnebango by accident ah, great great times and then the last Nomad palette is the Hudson Valley palette. This is going to be a beautiful fall palette. I love this palette. It's my second favorite Nomad palette. Love the color story. Love the way that I did the look when I created, love the looks I created this palette. Very beautiful. Perfect for the fall season. Up next, I have this really cute palette called Falling Into You Again. This is from CXC Beauty. I met the owners. They are incredible. Such a cute little mini fall palette. I have the Salem and the Witch Eyeshadow Palette from Salem Cosmetics. I just was sent this. I haven't had a chance to play with this yet, but it is super, super cute. I'm excited to give this a go. I absolutely love this palette from Ace Beauté. This is the Tropical Vibes Palette. Still such a beautiful green eyeshadow palette. Oh my God, do I love this so much. This is just, oh my God, it's chef kiss. It's everything. Another gorgeous palette from Ace Beauté called Envy. This is a beautiful green eyeshadow palette. Very, very, very beautiful. I love this little flora palette from Ace Beauté. First off, the little flowers in here are super adorable, but then I really do love the color story. This is a perfect fall palette. Really loved this palette. I loved creating looks with this. 
definitely a must have in the collection. Then we have the Cala palette from Ace Beauté. Again, more flowers in here. This is a beautiful, cool tone color story. I really had a lot of fun playing with this. These are the only two palettes I kept out of the flora collection, out of the floral collection that they released. But I really, really do love this palette. Very beautiful. We have the Brainwash palette from Chaotic Cosmetics. Very beautiful pastel Halloween inspired palette. Love the duo and multi-chromes in this palette. Formula is really, really good. And I really enjoy playing with this palette. Definitely a very underwhelming palette from Chaotic Cosmetics. This is the Dreadful palette. This came in a Halloween mystery box. It's a cute concept, but the color story just really isn't wowing. Neither is the formula, but I still enjoy having it because it is a Halloween palette. I do like catering. I do like having brands that cater to Halloween, but this is a very underwhelming palette for sure. This is the only palette that I've ever tried from Oma Beauty. This Black Magic palette is still so beautiful. The shimmers in here are incredible. I really love the eye look that I created when playing with this palette. I had so much fun. I really need to show this one more love because this was one of my favorites back in the day. Here we have the Man Eater Untamed palette from Art of Two Cosmetic. First off, I love the packaging. Outside color story is really freaking cute. Love that. And then the inside color story, I actually had a lot of fun. This palette took me by surprise. This is, for, this is my first time being introduced to this brand. I was really incredibly surprised by the formula. I love the color story. I love the eye look I created with this. And this was a lot of fun. They did a really good job. I love this palette. We have the Gardens of Juvia palette. This is such a beautiful pastel moment. I think it's actually one of the only few palettes I actually have from Juvia's place. And this is a lot of fun to play with. Super cheap, inexpensive, and very beautiful. It's a very beautiful pastel palette. I need to show this more love. Okay, so we have this e.l.f. X Chipotle <laughs> eyeshadow palette. You know, it's not the best formula at all, but I still love the concept. It's such a cute concept. I can literally see like the white rice, brown rice, black beans or pinto beans. You have your ch steak and chicken. You have your medium to mild salsa. You have your salsa verde. You have your guac. You have your lettuce. You have your cheese. Like, come on. I see it all. I also go to Chipotle probably like once or twice a week. I live and breathe for that brand. But legit, this is so iconic. And I don't know if I'll ever part with this, honestly. I even like this damn palette. This is the Denim Days palette from, from e.l.f. Like, first off, they have like a little jean moment, like a little jean tag. Come on. And the color story really took me by surprise. The color story really, really, really took me by surprise. This was such a cute palette. And there's a dog hair. Or her hair stuck to this. Oops. We have the Makeup Revolution. This is the Adventure palette. And, um, well... I didn't really do much with this. I was supposed to do a review and then it just ended up not happening. I'll make sure I use it before my declutter, not this next one coming up, but the following one. So I can make sure I actually try this palette because I haven't had a chance to really play with it. I once owned all of the BH Cosmetics, like speak it out, say it out loud collection, whatever it is. This is the Optimistic AF. I once owned the entire collection, but I did declutter them all. And then Heather actually went and bought this for me because she said that she thinks that I would be she thinks that I would absolutely love this palette because it's a fall color story, and she was right. And when I did the eye look at this, I was like, damn it, Heather. <laughs> you were right. You were so right. I forgot how gorgeous this palette was. So I'm very happy that she actually purchased this for me, even though I did declutter it long ago. I'm very happy that I have it again. So thank you, Heather. We have the Game Beauty. This is the Elemental Blast collection. So this is the Zero Two Cairo palette. Very beautiful blue icy palette. This is the Electro palette from... This is the Electro palette from the Elemental Collection. Very pretty. This is the Dendro palette. Very beautiful. Again, part of the Elemental Collection with Game Beauty. This is the Pyro palette with Game Beauty. I really love this one. Very beautiful. But surprisingly, Geo, the third, but surprisingly, Geo, this palette right here was my absolute favorite from the Elemental Collection from Game Beauty. Again, very gorgeous in all five together. Oh my God, I created such a pretty look. I love the look I created with all five palettes together. This is the Pure X Raw Beauty Christie. This is a two sided palette. So you're going to have neutral on one side, colorful on the other. And you know what, y'all? This was such a bitch to get. I waited like 11 hours on the website trying to get my hands on this palette. And I barely even use it anymore. And it's not even that pretty <laughs> anymore. I love Robbie Christie. She's one of my favorite content creators. But like, legit, this is just barely getting love anymore. I just, I don't really. Don't use it, but I hold on to it because this was this was a fight. And it's so funny. The day that I got this palette was the day that Koa got really sick. He was a tummy cold puppy. We had a rush to the emergency vet. I was at the vet still waiting in line to get my hands on this palette. 
What a launch. We're going into the BH Cosmetics. This is the Sweep Shop collection. So we're gonna have Cherry on top. It's an eight pan colorful red eyeshadow palette. This is the Cotton Candy palette. Very, very, very pretty palette. I really enjoyed the Sugar Cone one because it's like a beautiful neutral palette and this was a lot of fun to play with. Very beautiful. We have this beautiful Bubblegum palette. You know, this is why it's kind of fun going through my collection because I forget what some of these shades look like. This is a beautiful Icy Blue palette. What? I need to play with this one more often. We have this beautiful orange sorbet palette, which you guys see ranked every year in my fall inspired palettes. Very, very, very beautiful. Then we have the sweet pistachio. Then we have this um, pistachio palette. You know, it's funny. I've never had pistachio ice cream, so I could not tell you what it tastes like, but the palette is beautiful. We have this gorgeous palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. This is the Warlock palette. This is the only palette I was not able to feature on my channel, but I will say this is a beautiful palette. I love the Fantasy Cosmetica formula. Oh my God, it is incredible. Really, really, really loved this fighter palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. This is a beautiful, cool tone, like neutral moment. Such a fun palette to play with. Really love the eye look I created with this. I have this gorgeous, gorgeous Rogue palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. Again, beautiful. Now these shimmers are so buttery and creamy that they actually break really easily. So be careful whenever you play with this. Be careful when you put your finger in here because one dip can really cause an indent because of how buttery and creamy these are. We have this beautiful Sorcerer's palette. I mean, again, look at how gorgeous. This is like a perfect like little mermaid palette, honestly. It is so beautiful. So this is the Bard palette. Um, this is what I mean by the shadows are really easy to break. This just broke all on its own. And every time I go into this palette, I literally have to press this back down and then it just crumbles up all over again. And I don't know why, I don't know what to do. It just wants to break. It doesn't wanna stay the same. It's just so sad. Same thing with my Druid palette. This is the first palette that Fantasy Cosmetica has come out with. They sent this mean PR and that top matte shade just start crumbling out of nowhere. <sighs> It's so sad because I love this palette so much. Okay, so moving on to the next drawer. This is my Melt Cosmetics slash like ABH drawer. So up first, we do have this blue print, this blue print palette from Melt Cosmetics. Now I used to be totally obsessed with this brand, but I definitely feel like their, their formula has changed over the years. I don't really know what happened, but I really did enjoy this particular palette, but I just feel like the quality has gone down it's weird. I have like a love hate relationship with this brand now. And I never thought I'd say that really. I still really do love this radioactive palette from Melt Cosmetics. This is such a beautiful palette. I had so much fun when I played with this and um, this just brings out good memories. Cause when I did a review on this palette, I actually told the story about how Chris and Dominique watched one of my videos. And in that video that she watched, I was actually hating on her palette. So <laughs> brings back great memories. This is the Smoke Sessions palette with Mel Cosmetics. I really did love this palette. My audio was messed up in the video, but when I reviewed this palette, I actually told you guys a story about the first time I ever got high in my entire life. What an incredible funny story it was because I time traveled in life and um, it was just a lot of fun. This brings back great memories and I actually really did enjoy this palette. I will always love the original Gemini palette right here. This is actually kind of what brought me back into YouTube, what got me to do my makeup looks because I had quit for six months and then I came back and uh, while I did not review this palette, it's what started my love for YouTube all over again. So I will always, always, always cherish the Gemini palette. Really, really enjoyed the Rustic palette from Milk Cosmetics. This is truly so beautiful. Really had a great time with this one, so. Great memories. This is the Day of the Dead collection with Milk Cosmetics. These are both palettes right here. We have the Life and the Death. I really love the eye looks that I created with this palette. I love that video. I had so much fun. My sister actually got these for me for as a Christmas gift. And um, yeah, I just, man, did I love these palettes so much. We have this 420 palette right here. Love the little shifts. And here's the color story on the inside. I really love the eye look that I created when I bought this palette. I remember like I bought the full collection. So like it came with pipes that I did pass along, but I had so much fun when playing with this palette. This is the formula that I really knew and loved. So when I tried like the millennial pink and like the, the brunette palettes and stuff like that. I ended up decluttering those ones because I just couldn't get over the palettes and I remember like the latest one they created the Letro Trip palette. I decluttered that one. I decluttered the brunette, millennial pink, um, the 
the big four pan palettes from Melt. I decluttered quite a few in my last collection. I'm actually very proud about if you guys wanna go check that out. But I kept the ones I still really love because I still have a lot of love for this palette. We have the Gemini Volume 2 palette right here. This is just a little piece of a, the cardboard packaging, just so you guys know. But um, yeah, I was very proud of myself for being able to declutter palettes the way that I never had before. So um, I kept the ones I really liked, and this is such a beautiful palette. And lastly, for the Melt side, we do have the Recently Deceased Beetlejuice collection. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous eyeshadow palette. Really enjoyed this collection. They did a really good job with this one, actually. Up next, we do have the Dose of Colors. This is the Smoky Saray palette. I only reason why I kept this is because that black shade right here was the perfect black to line my upper waterline whenever I put on false lashes. I don't use it for anything else, so I think at some point I am gonna go ahead and declutter this just because like I no longer use it, but I did wanna show it today before it does get decluttered in my next video, but she's cute. I just don't ever use it anymore. Cutting Edge palette with Dose of Colors. Again, another gorgeous green eyeshadow palette, but I don't show it as much love as I used to, but it is really, really, really beautiful. I wonder if Dose of Colors, like what they have now, because I haven't really seen anyone talk about them in a hot minute. Up next, I do have the ABH Cosmos palette. This is cute. I definitely would say the pictures were a little bit misleading. It looked a little bit differently on the photos versus in person. It was a cute palette. I did enjoy the shade Galaxy because I do love a good matte with shimmer in it. I think it's really pretty, but, um, Definitely not my favorite palette from them, but it is cute. All right, guys, we have the ABH Novu palette. This is a cute little pastel spring palette. I definitely enjoyed this when I played with this. Definitely brought back some great memories of reviewing ABH because it had been a long time since they released something. We do have the ABH Soft Glam. Now this was like such a popular palette back in the day. Everybody lived and breathed by the Soft Glam. I do enjoy it. Um, it's been a hot minute since I did play with it though, but it is a really beautiful palette. All right, next we have the Amarizi palette. Like, ugh, the sparkles on this is insane. I had a lot of fun playing with this palette. It's kind of dirty at this point. Um, it's been a while since I actually picked up this palette, but I did have a lot of fun when I played with this. Um, I couldn't remember what my eye look is, though. I wonder if I'd still like it to this day if I still play with it and recreated that eye look. I wonder how I feel about it now. I have the Norvina palette right here. This is a very beautiful, kind of cool tone. Neutral palette pops a color. Um, she's cute. Probably one of my least faves of them, but she's cute. Oh my gosh, y'all. This is the subculture palette. Remember how everybody tore this palette to shreds? I remember I got it like two years ago when I saw it at TJ Maxx. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. And I got what people were talking about. But um, <laughs> yeah, when I saw it at TJ Maxx, I was like, oh shit. Everybody hated this palette and I had to get it. Still like the felt front though, but yeah. We have the Sultry palette from ABH and you're so crazy about this palette is that I desperately wanted this for my birthday so someone got it for me for my birthday and looking at the color story now my tastes have changed so much that I'm just kind of like why would I desperately want this just because it's a color story I never would go for but I did really enjoy it when I got it and I used it a lot so I'm very thankful to the person that did get this for me for my birthday because that was actually a really sweet gesture of them but um yeah I remember being so obsessed with this palette. Oh my gosh. So this is the Carly Bible palette. And this was the first time a video of mine, I think like hit like close to 20,000 views. And I did not like this palette and people were so pissed at me for not liking the palette or like saying her name wrong or not watching her as a content creator. Oh, that's the first time I experienced a lot of hate. So I'll never forget that because of this. <laughs> We have the Fall Romance palette right here, and uh, I definitely wanted more of this palette. I will say this ember shade is really pretty, but it was a little lackluster to me. Definitely not what I expected. It looks, again, different in photos than it did in person, so it's cute, but it's definitely not the best. We have the Riviera palette right here. This was a lot of fun. Definitely reminded me of being on cruises. I really enjoyed playing this palette. Um, I don't know what happened to the brush. I keep taking the brushes out while I'm showing this to you guys so they don't fall out, but I'm actually missing the brush on this one. Not that it matters because I think the brushes in here kind of suck, but this was a fun palette to play with. Up next, we do have the Jackie Ina collab with ABH. I definitely feel like this palette did not get as much love as it deserved. I think it got overshadowed by the Amarizi that came out shortly after. I really love this palette. I love the eye look that I created with this palette. It was so beautiful. Jackie did such a phenomenal job. I love the outside packaging to the color story to the formula. This was a great palette overall. I really, really enjoyed this one. Now, this is the Narvina Volume 3 palette. I did declutter all my other bigger volumes because I just generally don't use them. I think this is such... A huge palette for what it truly needed to be they're like 60 dollars for this 
and I feel like honestly I didn't get as much use out of this as I wanted to so I wouldn't be surprised if I end up decluttering this just because it just sits here at this point. All right guys, moving on to one of my favorite brands besides Glamlight, we have the Blend Bunny Cosmetics. This is the Lore palette. This is such a beautiful palette. Still one of my favorite palettes from this brand. This is a perfect palette if you love like mermaid style colors, summer, everything about this is just truly gorgeous. I think Maggie did such a phenomenal job and she paired it very beautifully with this next palette. The Trove palette and this is a mini quad multi-chrome palette. This is absolutely stunning. Maggie did the best job and it pairs very beautifully with that Lore palette. I still am so obsessed with how amazing this palette truly is. We have the All Done Up eyeshadow palette. This is a beautiful like rocky, it's like a beautiful grungy glam palette. You can have nice, beautiful like highlighter shades with this. You can do grungy shades with this. You can do neutral shades with this. Very gorgeous. I think Maggie created a beautiful palette. This came out during Christmas, I think of last year, and I really did enjoy the formula. I love the eye look, and I think Maggie did a beautiful job with this palette. Now the color story on the Sickly Sweet palette definitely threw me off because it's just kind of jumbled in there and it didn't really make a lot of sense. However, I really, really love the formula and I love the two different eye looks I created out of this palette. It's a beautiful like Halloween slash sweet candy vibes palette. You just got to give it a chance. I know it's really intimidating, but when you actually start playing with this, it was actually, when, you, when I actually start playing with this, I loved the eye looks and I thought this was a beautiful palette and it kind of looked like a candy bowl. I really enjoyed it. We have the Sugar and Grunge palette from Blend Bunny. Again, another beautiful like pastel grungy eyeshadow look. This is supposed to be like a throwback to like the 90s. Definitely brought back some memories of my childhood and I really, really enjoyed this palette. This was probably my least favorite palette from Blend Bunny. This is the Forget Me Not. This is a versatile face palette so you can do bronzers, blush, highlighters, eye looks with this and I just... I don't know, I didn't really gravitate to this one like I did other ones. So while it's cute, it's nice to have in the collection, especially if you are a makeup artist. It just was my least favorite one. Next, we have the Dollhouse. This definitely catered to those who really is art. This definitely catered more to those who love neutral shades. Really pretty, not as exciting as her other ones, but I did enjoy it. This is the original OG Blends palette. This is the first palette that Maggie ever launched with Blend Bunny Cosmetics. I fell in love with this palette. It's still one of my absolute favorite palettes from this brand. The mattes blend so beautifully. They're so pigmented and my God, it's just, it is just that palette. Next, we do have the Primal palette. This palette was sadly discontinued. I'm very sorry to see it go, but it was a lot of fun to play with. It was a beautiful palette. One of my shades did come in broken, but um, yeah, I was sad to see this go. Same with the Surge palette. This actually got discontinued as well. I was so sad to see this go. I really love this palette. This is the second palette that Blend Bunny Cosmetics ever launched and it was just so sad to see this go, but my gosh, is it beautiful. However, if you did miss the Primal and the Surge, we do have the um, Machina palette right here. Very beautiful palette. I really, really enjoy this and I also really love the layout of this palette. Maggie did a beautiful job and this is a, this is her last project that she did with her dad and it's just very, very sweet. I love this one. We have Beauty Bay's Book of Magic palette. This is a gorgeous Halloween inspired palette. I really do enjoy this palette, especially for the Halloween season. The formula in here is really incredible. I feel like Beauty Bay gets slept on a lot, but they have great palettes. I have the Made by Mitchell and the Beauty Bay collaboration. This was actually gifted to me by my uh, clip, but by one of my closest friends, Mikey. This is the first time that anybody's ever sent me anything and it was this palette and it's kind of what forged our friendship. And now like five years later, we're the closest of friends. I freaking love him more than anything and I will always cherish this palette. We have the Beauty Bay Earthly palette. Just look at how gorgeous this palette is. Like this is a such a beautiful green eyeshadow palette. Oh my god. I love it. I really, really, really loved the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. This was like everything. I love the oranges and the greens and the blue. Man, I love this palette. We have the Be Perfect Cosmetics. This is the Love Tahiti Volume 3 collaboration with Stacey Marie. This is my first time ever trying anything from this brand. I absolutely love this palette. I love the colors, the formula. Stacey Marie did such a beautiful job. She's a pro makeup artist and um, damn, this is such a beautiful palette. I love it. We have another Be Perfect collaboration with Stacey Marie. This is the Carnival palette and look at how beautiful this is. If this is not a perfect fall palette, I don't know what is. I absolutely love this palette. It's a lot of colors for sure, so it's a little intimidating, but it's beautiful. We have another Be Perfect collaboration with Stacey Marie. This is the Interstellar palette and I love that it's like a half rainbow, half black and white. It's so pretty. I really enjoy this palette. At first I was not a big fan of it until I actually got it in person and I was like, damn, all right. This is a good palette. I really enjoy this one. 
we have this massive Beauty Bay Earthly palette. Now this is the bigger version. The Earthly one is another smaller version of this, but oh my gosh, again, it is a stunning, stunning palette with great formula. Definitely a lot of repeating colors, but clearly I love green shadows, guys. We have the Adept Cosmetics. This is the Minka palette. This is really expensive for what it is. It's a lot of like pressed foils. They're really beautiful shades. I definitely have to add a little bit more of like a matte to add some dimension, but I really do like the formula. This is um, the Amulet palette from Adept Cosmetics. Really beautiful. There's two versions. You can get the Seth version and there's like another lighter one. I really do enjoy this, really pretty. We do have like this, I think this is from Arrow, the show Arrow. I never watched that show, but I will say the colors in here are really beautiful really stunning palette. I'm really glad that I got it because I love the shades in here. The reason why I even tried this brand to begin with is because my beautiful friend Heather Austin had her own collaboration with them. I still love this palette. Heather did the best job with this palette and I'm so freaking excited for her. Alrighty, moving on to my ColourPop drawer. At first we did the Mandalorian palette. I really love this palette. I never got to do a review on this for some reason, but I still absolutely love this palette. Very, very beautiful. We have the Going Coconuts palette. This was actually my favorite palette from ColourPop, if you guys can't tell, that center shade right there is pretty much at the pan. There's really not too much left of it. Very beautiful neutral palette. You guys know that I have a soft spot for mattes with shimmers in them, and this was just by far my absolute favorite ColourPop palette. We do have the ColourPop. This is the Deja Vu palette. You can actually find this at Target. Very beautiful neutral palette. You know, this is that that Topes palette. This palette took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, but it's a cool tone neutral palette. It's very beautiful, very wearable for every day too. We have the ColourPop C3PO palette. I wish ColourPop Star Wars stuff would get more of recognition than what it did. They barely created anything around it, but it is what it is. I digress. I love Star Wars. So here we have the ColourPop C3PO. This is a gorgeous palette. God, I love it. If you've been here on my channel for a minute, you would know that the Little Ray Sunshine palette from ColourPop is again, one of my favorite, favorite palettes. I think this is so beautiful, a perfect fall palette right between the end of summer, beginning of fall. This is just everything. And I hit pan, I never really hit pan on shadows, but I did on this one because I love it so much. We have the ColourPop. This is the Uh-huh Honey palette. This is when they used to do glitters in their palettes. I'm so glad they don't do that anymore, but this is a beautiful palette. Still enjoy it. We do have the ColourPop B Poppy palette. This is another beautiful fall inspired palette. Pair this with a little ray of sunshine and it is chef's kiss. Another beautiful palette from um, ColourPop. This is the Orange You Glad. I'm kind of glad they're getting rid of their press glitters. They did reformulate it. So this is the old one. So this is not a good press glitter in the center, but still beautiful palette nonetheless. We have the Baby Got Peach palette. It's cute. We have the Fresh Greens palette. Again, you guys can find this one actually at Target. This is a Target exclusive. We have this beautiful Sage the Day palette. This is such a beautiful palette. I really love the outlook that I created with this palette. Really took me by surprise. We have this gorgeous, gorgeous Glow Getter palette. Again, another beautiful ColourPop palette. We have the ColourPop. This is the Just My Luck eyeshadow palette. Very, very cute. And they don't make palettes like that anymore. This little Tinkerbell palette from ColourPop is so cute. I really, 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 really enjoyed this palette. We had this beautiful Aura's Out palette. Again, another stunning one. This was like part of like a cloud collection. This is pastel. They do have pressed glitters in here, but it's still a really pretty palette. If you guys can't tell, I really love Mandalorian, the child palette, AKA Grogu. I absolutely really, really love this palette. So freaking beautiful. Another beautiful pastel palette. This is in a trance, beautiful pastel. It does have a pressed glitter in it, but um, it is really pretty. Love the outside packaging. I have the Frozen 2. This is the Elsa palette. Like, look at how cute. Ah, oh, brings back great memories. We have the Blue Moon palette, although this shade right here called Lumi, that was starting to pop out, but this is another beautiful ColourPop palette. I have the Lilac You A Lot palette. This is so pretty. I have the Frozen 2. This is the Elsa palette. Ah! Anyway, really pretty. Hate that it has a pressed glitter, but really pretty. Oh, we have the ColourPop It's My Pleasure palette. I think this is one of the first color palettes I think I reviewed. I think, I don't remember. I think it was one of the first. We have the Strawberry Shake palette right here. I don't really remember too much about this one, honestly. It's okay. We have the ColourPop. This is the Main Squeeze eyeshadow palette. It's a red eyeshadow palette. It's not my fave, honestly. 
I don't remember too much. All I know is I'm just not a big fan of it. We have the Darth Vader palette with ColourPop. Love this one. But I do love Star Wars. So I'm a little biased there. We do have ColourPop Smoke Show palette. This is still a beautiful black gray eyeshadow palette. I really do love this one still. We have the ColourPop Ornate eyeshadow palette right here. I'm probably going to end up decluttering this one, honestly. We have the Barquet eyeshadow palette. Love the outside packaging. Color story is cute, um, but I still might end up decluttering this series right here. And then we have the Grandeur palette right here. They have a pressed glitter in the center. Very pretty palette, actually. Um, we'll see how I feel during my declutter, though. We have their new little holiday palettes. This is their holiday collaboration with Target. So we have the Jingle On palette right here. This is the Jingle On. We have the Warm Wishes eyeshadow palette. And we have the Out All Night eyeshadow palette. You have the ColourPop collaboration with Candyland. So this is the Candy Castle palette. Definitely not my fave. I'll probably end up decluttering this, honestly. We have the ColourPop Twist of Slate palette. I really, really, really love this palette. Super cute, very cool tone moment. I enjoy this one. And then we have Sweet As Can Be. This is the Winnie the Pooh palette. I love this palette. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I love this palette a lot. Next, we do have the Clay It Cool palette. Very pretty palette. We have this little, um, with this little Valentine's Day palette. This is the Melt For You palette. We have the Sealed With A Kiss eyeshadow palette. We have the 143 AKA I Love You eyeshadow palette. This is part of their Valentine's Day collection. Um, I end up might decluttering these ones too, honestly. We have their Bambi collection next. This is the Flower palette. She is really, really, really cute. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Really, really, really enjoy the Thumper palette. Thumper, Thumper. So pretty. And then we do have the Bambi palette right here. Very, very cute little Bambi palette. I'll kind of run through my little quads rather quickly, but here we have the I See You Baby. It's a very cute little quad palette. On the Mango palette, this is really, really pretty, but my gosh, these look very similar to each other. Wait till you guys see these. You'll see that these look very similar. This looks like, like one of my little Leo palettes. We have Filling Coconutty. It's cute. We have the Sorbet palette right here. And most of these little quads I do get from my mystery boxes, by the way. We have the shade called, Cit we have the palette Citrus Frizz. Citrus Frizz. So here we have the Capricorn palette right here. We're starting with... Um, the horoscope collection. So we have a Capricorn, my cat Callie, who's still alive. She actually turns 15 in January. She is a Capricorn. My best friend Alyssa and Kaya are both Aquariuses. Next we did the Pisces and my dad and my sister are both Pisces. Then we do have the Aries. My mom's an Aries. Koa is an Aries and Miss Beautiful Paige Corrin is an Aries as well. I really, really love this Taurus palette right here. Very, very beautiful. We have the Cancer palette. We have the Big Leo Energy palette. My husband's actually a Leo. I don't know what's happening, but my Gemini palette, I know I kind of went out of order. I was supposed to do Gemini and then Leo, but my Gemini palette is legit breaking apart. And I don't know what is going on. It's so sad. It's just crumbling apart. So I'm not gonna open up this one. I'll probably have to declutter this because it's just, it's just falling apart and I don't know what's happening. We have the Virgo palette right here. We have the Libra palette right here. My beautiful friend, Mikey's a Libra. Okay, on to our next ColourPop drawer. So the first palette that we have in here is a palette that I probably never will declutter. This is my At Foresight. This is Robbie Christie's collaboration with ColourPop. I absolutely love this palette. It is so beautiful. I think Robbie Christie did such a great job with this palette and I will always have such a soft spot for it. Very beautiful. We do have the ColourPop. This is the Wild Nothing palette. I was really surprised by how much I really enjoyed this palette. The shade right here was so fun. Very, very beautiful. It's been a hot minute since I played with it, so I definitely need to play with it again, but I did enjoy this palette. Just got this in a ColourPop mystery box. I do notice a pressed glitter. This is the Off Melrose palette. I don't have this one, so I'm excited to give this a go. I might pass it forward though still depending, but it is really pretty nonetheless. I do have the ColourPop Good As Gold eyeshadow palette. I really love this palette. I think it's fantastic for like the new year season and Christmas season. It's still really beautiful. And um, 
Yeah, I think I'll definitely keep this one for sure. I got this Sweet Talk palette because Robert E. Christie did a review on it and I got it and I absolutely fell in love with this. I used to wear this palette all the time going back. I used to wear this palette all the time at work. I really, really enjoyed this. Very beautiful. We do have the ColourPop Malibu Barbie palette. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful palette. Ah, uh, I do love it. We do have the ColourPop Flirty Talk palette. This is their Valentine's Day inspired palette. She's cute, not my favorite, but she's cute. We do have the ColourPop Snow White palette. Y'all, I love anything Disney theme, and I will say this is such a cute palette. They really did a good job with this one. I really like this one. We have the ColourPop Not A Box Of Chocolate palette. I love this palette. I think ColourPop did a really good job with this. This came out last year for Halloween, and I think it's supposed to be like their holiday palette. Definitely reminds me a bit more of like a Valentine's Day palette, but it's still really beautiful. I mean, like look at how these look like actual chocolates. I love it. Up next, we have the ColourPop Limoncello palette. I actually paid for this myself, and um, I was kind of disappointed with this one. This one actually wasn't my favorite. Fun fact, actually like 95% of all my ColourPop palettes, I bought myself. I got very, very little in PR. So majority of this is all paid for by me and I'm very proud of it. That's why it's so hard for me to part from any ColourPop palettes. Up next, we do have the Milan palette. Do you remember how crazy everybody went over this palette? How quickly it sold out? No one could get their hands on this. It launched right during time when the world shut down because of COVID. Oh, this was a stressful launch. But here we have the the Fa Mulan palette. This is the ColourPop Avatar, the last airbender palette. I absolutely love this palette. I loved the show so much. I absolutely hated the movie. M. Night Shyamalan butchered the movie, but they are doing a live action Netflix show. I saw the trailer for it. <gasps> I am so excited. I love Avatar, the last airbender. So I really, really love this palette and I will always hold on to this one. Here we have the Garden Variety palette. God, this palette brings back so many memories because this is when ColourPop was releasing a palette every single week and I was buying every single full collection launch. And now I don't even really remember my thoughts around this palette. I mean, it looks cute from here, but I don't remember what I think about it now because I bought so many at that time. I had FOMO. I had a fear of missing out. She's cute though. We do have this beautiful Legends of Korra. This is the extension to the Avatar series and I really do enjoy this palette. I think they did a good job. It's beautiful. This is the uh, Winky Club. Um, I don't know who they are, but this is the one that ColourPop did send to me in PR. It's a cute palette. It's cute. I just don't have like any nostalgia feelings with it because I, I generally don't know what this is. We have the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer eyeshadow palette. I really do enjoy this. They actually did bring this back in stock. You guys can find this at Target and at Ulta. We do have the ColourPop. This is the Alice in Wonderland collection. It's a really, really cute palette. I really enjoyed the look I did. I loved, the, I loved this collection. I thought ColourPop did a really good job with this one. The excitement was real on this collection. This is what dreams are made for. This is the Lizzie McGuire collection. And I was so excited to buy this collection because I loved Lizzie McGuire. It's what I watched growing up. And I thought this was a beautiful collection. Love this one. Then we do have the ColourPop. This is the Witching Hour. This is the second collab with the Hocus Pocus collection. It's a cute palette. Not as fun as the first or third, but it's cute. It's cute. We have the ColourPop in the Springs. This is from Palm Springs. Very beautiful. I did get this in a mystery box and I think it's a really, really stunning palette. Really beautiful. We have Sugar, Spice, and Everything Nice. This is the Powerpuff Girls collection. Again, this was such a throwback. I really, really enjoyed playing with this palette. I think they did a good job doing bubbles, blossoms, and buttercup. I really enjoyed this palette. We have Disney's Haunted Mansion, Welcome Foolish Mortals palette. I love this palette. I actually was at a Disney girls trip with other influencers and I left in the middle of the day to go home and review this entire collection because I really wanted to get this up. Plus Corey had school, but I will say they did a fantastic job with the Haunted Mansion theme. I really love this palette. We have this really cute 1111 palette. This is definitely a mix of like a cool tone and warm tone neutral palette. This one actually really took me by surprise how much I fell in love with this palette. I think it's a best of both cool tone and neutral. I think it's best of both cool tone and warm tone neutral palette and um, you couldn't go wrong with this one. Very beautiful. Up next we do the the Star Wars ColourPop palette. I do wish the color stripe was a little bit better but I really do love this palette. I love anything and everything Star Wars. I love when they do these right here because these are their Super Shock Shadow Formula. So incredible. They really did a really good job with this launch and I just... <sighs> I love it. We have the Hocus Pocus Gather Around Sisters. You guys remember how viral this palette went and like how it could not stay in stock and everybody went crazy over this, myself included. I love this, but I also love Hocus Pocus. I don't remember the full details about this palette, but I remember like something happened to my collection, like things were 
being sent, sent to the wrong address. There was like a little fiasco with it, but I still really enjoyed this. Um, <laughs> this I think was my first Disney palette and I really enjoyed this one. I loved this palette. This is the All Hallows Eve. This is the third Hocus Pocus collection. They did the best job with this. Beautiful Halloween inspired, beautiful witch inspired. They did a great job capturing the essence of Hocus Pocus with this. I loved it. We have the ColourPop collaboration with Naruto. Um, this was cool, but I will say this looks very similar to the Avatar collection. So if you had that one, you did not need this one. But um, I was still grateful that I got in PR. This was cool. We have the Midnight Masquerade. This is with all the Disney princesses. Look at how cute. ColourPop doesn't do anything like this anymore. I really, really wish they would. Or I wish they would have a collection for each princess. That'd be so freaking cool. But this was such a throwback. This is such a throwback palette to me. Oh, wow. I forgot about this. We have the ColourPop Fade Into Hue eyeshadow palette. This is a beautiful rainbow pastel palette. Granted, it does have pressed glitters, so I'm not a fan of that, but it's still a very beautiful, beautiful palette. ColourPop did a good job with this one. I really loved the Aurora Struck palette. This is a beautiful like winter theme palette that came out last year. This was such a beautifully executed collection. I loved playing with this. I think it's perfect for like the winter season and it's like a nice cool tone icy blues, purples, lavenders, greens. It's a beautiful, gorgeous palette. I do have the ColourPop Smokin' Hot palette. I don't know why I never played with this on my channel, but I never did. It's like a warm tone palette. Nothing too special about it, but my need to have it. I had to have it. I bought it during Black Friday. I got like 30% off, so that's what I remember. But I don't remember, but I never played it for, I never played with it on, on my YouTube channel for you guys for some reason. I do have the ColourPop It's a Mood eyeshadow palette. This is such a beautiful fall palette. I love this so much. I did get a second one in a ColourPop mystery box, which I actually passed forward into one of my Christmas giveaways. But this is a beautiful fall inspired palette. I love this one. You have the ColourPop It's the Bare Necessities palette. It is such a cute warm tone palette. This is just a great neutral palette. If you love neutrals, you don't need any other palette besides this. And um, yeah, we do have the opposite of the Bare Necessities. We have the Stone Cold Fox palette. This is a cool tone neutral palette. Again, very gorgeous. I don't have as many cool tones in my collection, so I really do enjoy the ones I have. Very beautiful. I love this one. This palette, this is a beautiful like icy pink, light pink moment. I had a lot of fun playing with this palette. I forgot what type of look I did in my review, but I did enjoy this one. I did. I also really love like this rock candy one. Oh my God, very gorgeous. Very gorgeous. Although why there's like a different color right here. I don't know what that's about. That's a little odd. I believe I got this plated jewel palette in a ColourPop mystery box, but um, this is why I like getting them because you never know what you're going to get and they always give like big palettes in there at some point, but it's a really pretty colorful palette and it's like mostly all shimmers, which I really like. And then lastly, we have the So Jaded palette. This is Kathleen Light's collaboration with ColourPop. Again, I got this in a ColourPop mystery box. I missed out on it the first time I launched it. It's a very pretty palette. It does have pressed glitters in here that are not my favorite, but it's a really pretty palette. It's supposed to be like gems and stuff like that. Very cute. If you guys can't tell, I have a massive ColourPop collection. I'm obsessed. Okay, so I just counted. I have 99 ColourPop palettes alone. Ugh. But to be fair, to be fair, I had well over 100 back in like August, but I did declutter, I wanna say like 40 to 50 something ColourPop palettes. So I'm definitely doing good. I'm definitely doing good. So let's continue showing, let's, so let's continue with the eyeshadow palette collection videos. So up next, we're just gonna start moving into like my higher end palettes. So up next we do have the naked this is the urban decay um honey palette oh my god did i love this palette this is so beautiful this is what made me really like the naked formula i remember i had one two three the the fire one i don't have those ones anymore but i kept this one in particular because the formula on this one was just so good i had to keep this one we do have the urban decay this is the wild west palette again this is another beautiful palette from urban decay i feel like they don't really make palettes like this anymore so sad, but this was so good. I really enjoyed this one. We do have the Naked. This is the Naked Urban Decay Cyber Palette. This is a beautiful, like almost all shimmer palette with like two to three mattes. Really beautiful palette. We do have the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Luxury Palettes of Pop Palette. I forgot how I got this. I think it was like either like an advent calendar or like a mystery box, but I got it in something and I don't remember how I got it, <laughs> but it's a really cute palette. 
This is the um, only palette that I own by Makeup by Mario. This is the Ethereal Eyeshadow Palette. This is a gorgeous neutral palette. You can wear this every single day. The mattes are so light but easy to blend and those shimmers are really, really, really beautiful. I really enjoyed this palette and I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I have the Too Faced. This is the Pumpkin Spice Second Slice Eyeshadow Palette. This was actually really fun. Took me by surprise with how much I ended up liking this palette because um, I generally didn't really care for a lot of Too Faced palettes because I find them to be kind of boring. And um, this actually took me by surprise. I was really impressed with this one. So we do have the Too Faced. This is the Italian Spritz eyeshadow palette. This is a really cute palette. It smells incredible. Like it really does smell incredible. I had fun with this. Was this a wowing palette? No, but I did have fun playing with this and um, I'm glad I got it. Ultimately, I'm glad I got it. Next, we do have the Tarte. This is the Man Eater palette. Man, this palette took me by surprise. I genuinely wasn't sure what to expect when playing this palette because it's been forever since I played with a Tarte palette, but the formula was incredible. This is a perfect, just like overall fall and winter palette. You can use this any time of the year, honestly, but I really recommend it during the fall and winter season. I just really love this palette. It really took me by surprise. I never got the second one. Maybe one day I will, but this was a lot of fun to play with. Up next, we do have the Danessa Myricks. This is the Volume 4 Lightwork Palette. This is a beautiful, beautiful palette. These four shades right here are water activated, or mostly these two are water act activated. I had a lot of fun playing this palette. It's really expensive for what it is. I was going to buy the next one. I was going to buy the fifth one that just came out, but it's just so expensive. And I don't play with this one as much as I want to, but I love the shades that are in here. The multi-chromes are gorgeous. I just don't play with it enough to justify buying the next palette. Da na 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 Sorry, I really do love the Game of Thrones palette from Urban Decay. First off, I love that they have the the throne palette right here. Super freaking cute. Really, really, really love that. And then you do have right here the actual like palette itself. Now I will say this palette is very underwhelming. The shadows sucked. I didn't care for the formula. I didn't care for the eye look. I didn't care for anything about the physical shadows themselves, but I just love this palette because it was a Game of Thrones. It sold out so quickly and I'm such a Game of Thrones fan that like I had to have it. So I'm definitely gonna always hold on to this one. Up next, we do have the Pat McGrath. This is the Celestial Odyssey palette. I think I got this last year when I was on sale for like 70 bucks. Definitely not the most overwhelming palette. It's kind of like, it's all right. It's all right. It's not my favorite from the brand. Um, it's all right. I remember I just got it because I, I feel like I had to have it and I didn't want to miss out and it was on sale. So that's why I have it. Up next, we do have the Pat McGrath Star Wars collab. This is the golden one. Um, this is part of a massive Star Wars release. I kept the little mini palettes. The big Star Wars palette I actually did return because come to find out it was just a re-released Mothership palette. They just threw a sticker on. I was actually very disappointed. Their customer service sucked. It is what it is, but I still have the mini ones because these ones are actually super cute. So here we have the golden one. This is C3PO's palette. I feel like they could definitely done more golden shades in this palette. They kind of missed a mark, but a formula was really pretty in this palette. I can't deny that. Then we do have the Sith Seduction palette. So this is supposed to be like Darth Vader's palette. And again, the color story, definitely underwhelming, definitely underwhelming. It doesn't really scream Vader or dark or Sith, nothing at all for me, but it was a cute palette. The formula was really good. I was just definitely disappointed in the color scheme when playing with this palette. We do have the Divine Droid. So this is the R2D2 palette. And actually wasn't mad about this color story. It was actually kind of cute. Kind of cute on this one. So I kept the little mini Star Wars palettes and got rid of the big one. Up next, we do have the Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker palette. This is a beautiful Pat McGrath palette. This is actually gifted to me by a subscriber because she actually was decluttering this from her own collection. So she wanted to send this over to me. So I'm still very grateful for, her. but I really did enjoy playing with this palette. It's my first like big Star Wars palette that I missed out on because I couldn't afford it at the time, but I am glad I have it. And my gosh, is this heavy. <laughs> Next we have the Rise of Skywalker palette. Again, this is another mini um, mini palette. This has more of like the dark side to it. Again, really pretty colors. I wish that they would kind of do more stuff like this. I don't know why they stopped doing that, but this was a really fun, fun palette. Really cute too. Then we do have, again, another one of the Rise of Skywalker collections. This is the Galactic Gold. I love this Star Wars palette. I thought they did such a great job with this palette, with this color scheme. Really, really pretty. It was all shimmers, but my gosh, I really did enjoy this one. You have just the Mothership palette right here. This is such a pretty palette. I think this is when I really started to enjoy the brand, but... Um, I didn't show this one as much love as I wanted to, but it is such a pretty, I love this color. It's such a pretty palette and I really loved that color right there. So fun. 
This is the Moonlight Seduction palette. I will say it's a gorgeous palette, but paying like 125 is a little overpriced for Pat McGrath formula just because you can find these formulas in so many other cheaper palettes, but I will say I did pay the price for it. I don't think it's worth the price, but it is a pretty palette and I am still glad I have it. I just wish I didn't pay the price for it. I have this little mini Pat McGrath palette. Um, my sister actually got this for me for Christmas one year. This is before, this is when I was just getting into YouTube. She bought this for me. So this was like my first like expensive palette that someone ever bought for me and it's really pretty. I remember I did a review on this and uh, I'll forever be grateful for my sister for grabbing this for me because she didn't even know anything about makeup. She just saw this, saw the price and said, oh, well she deserves something expensive. So she bought it for me. Up next, we do the Pat McGrath. This is the Bridgerton collection. I love that show. I cannot wait for season three, but this is the little mini six pan palette. This was super cute. I'm really glad I got this one. I really loved that shade right there. And um, yeah, I like the palette. Up next, we do the Pat McGrath Labs Bridging 10 palette again. I think this was either the first or second one. I think this was the second collaboration they did together. Again, very, very, very beautiful palette. I had a lot of fun playing with this and I have nothing bad to say about it. Up next, we do have the Huda Beauty. This is the Rose Gold palette. This is a remastered palette. I did get this in a Huda Beauty mystery box. Mystery box. I wish they would do their mystery boxes again because I feel like they made really good mystery boxes. But here is that palette. I haven't really played with it. I got it and just kind of kept it because I thought this was too luxurious to play with. But yeah, I should play with it at some point. I feel like I should. Here we have the Huda Beauty. This is the Desert Dust Eyeshadow Palette. This was the first luxurious palette I have. This is the first luxury palette I ever bought myself. When I could barely afford to spend $60 on a palette, I got this one day for myself. I think it was like in 2018, honestly. Um, 2019, 2018, 2019. One of those time frames. I was able to afford this for myself. I was so beyond proud that I kept such good care of this because I was so scared to touch it because it was so expensive. But I'm still, I still love this palette. I still have such a great soft spot for this because the fact that like I saved up all my money just to buy this palette. We do have the Pretty Grunge palette by Huda Beauty. This is really pretty. I really enjoyed this palette. If you guys want to see more in-depth reviews and swatches of these, I did videos on pretty much all these, but um, I really enjoyed playing this palette. I love the eye look that it created and Huda Beauty never disappoints. I love that they release one palette a year because it just makes it so much more special and I crave it more and I love it more because it's not consistently thrown into your face and I love it. I have the Huda Beauty. This is the Mercury Retrograde Palette. I know a lot of people out there didn't care for it. I really love this palette. I did get this in a Huda Beauty mystery box. So worth it because I never owned it before, but very, very, very beautiful, very beautiful palette. We do have the Huda Beauty. We have the Naughty or Night, we have the Naughty Palette. This was so much fun to play with. I really enjoyed the playing this palette. I remember I saw someone do a look with it on TikTok. So then I had to go buy it because I never had it before, but I really enjoyed this palette. We do have this amazing rose quartz palette from Huda Beauty. This is probably one of my favorites from the brand. I absolutely love this palette. It's so easy to work with. I love using this for like everyday looks. So pretty. One of my favorites from them. We do have this gorgeous Huda Beauty Empowered palette. Now, like I said, I showed you guys earlier this, I showed you guys this palette earlier with the Alter Ego, but this is the Huda Beauty original version. And again, it is so beautiful. I absolutely love this palette. We do have the Natasha Denona. This is the Triochrome palette. I never had a chance to review this on my YouTube, but I really, really, really enjoyed this palette. Very beautiful, especially that shade Scarab right there. Really enjoyed that multi-chrome. Natasha Denona Love. We had the Natasha Denona Love palette. She's cute. Not my favorite, but she's cute. We do have the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. Now I actually did have a dupe to this with Alter Ego, but I did declutter that because I actually preferred this one over that one. But I will say this is really, really, really pretty. We do have the Natasha Denona. This is the Retro Glam palette. Retro Glam palette. I did declutter this, but then I brought it back because I am a hoarder and I like to have a full collection and I couldn't let this go yet. So yeah, I don't think she's pretty and I hate the way this performed, but I still have it. We have the My Dream palette from Natasha Denona. I really love the shade Invention. This was a cute palette, not one of my faves, but I did like it, but it's definitely not one of my faves from the brand. It was just okay, it was cute. Here we have the Retro palette. I actually bought this when I was gonna go to LA, and I'm really glad I did because it's a very beautiful, like neutral, everyday palette. I had a lot of fun playing with this. So worth it to me. Up next, we do have the Pastel palette. I really love this palette. I think Natasha Denona did something really cool with this because it never really come out with anything like this before. I really enjoyed playing with this. I love the outside packaging too, like this ombre moment. So freaking pretty. We have the beautiful Glam palette. This is just a gorgeous neutral palette. This actually was gifted to me by, this actually was gifted to me by one of my amazing friends, Ashley, but um, 
It's like a birthday gift. And I will say this is really, really pretty. We have this cute little Zendo palette from Natasha Dona. I really, we did this cute little Zendo palette. I did enjoy this palette. I thought it was super cute, colorful. And um, yeah, I enjoyed this one. We have the Xenon palette and Natasha Denona. I actually did like this palette. I don't think you really need this though if you have other palettes that look just like this. I do think it's kind of repetitive and it is kind of like 50 shades of gray, but it is cute. I did like the formula, but um, it is a little repetitive though. If you own the little mini Xenon palette, you definitely did not need the big size one because this is like the same thing and gives you the same look at $25 versus like $69, so. We have the Glam Face palette. This was the deep version and oh my gosh, I loved the light version so much that I had to go run and get the deep version because this was just a beautiful blush, highlighter, and eyeshadow palette moment. I love this palette. We have the light version of that face palette and again, so freaking gorgeous. I love this palette so much. I could not get enough of it when I first got it. So gorgeous. And lastly, we have the Natasha Denona. This is the Yucca palette, AKA the Yucky palette, only because my palette stunk. And it still has a little bit of a smell to it, not nearly as bad as it was when I first got it. But even though it didn't have the most pleasant smell, I love this palette. It was so freaking beautiful. I love the formula. I love the look. I love everything about this palette, minus the stinky smell. That's the only thing I have to be negative to say about it. It's just the stinky smell. Okay, so up next we do have Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Never Apologize for Being a Powerful Woman palette or Born, Born, Now or Never palette, something like that. This is a little mini palette. It does have a pressed glitter in the center, which really kind of took away the love I have for this palette because I hate the pressed glitters in this palette. They're just not good. So I didn't really care for this palette, but I will say it's a cute message behind it. I just, I hate when they have pressed glitters in here. This is the Unconditional palette from Dominique Cosmetics, again, we have another pressed glitter and I just don't do pressed glitters. This palette would have been so good without a pressed glitter, personally. This could have been a great moment, but the pressed glitter in here just really ruins it. It sticks, it doesn't lay well on the eye, it flakes, it's not easy to work with, so I did not like that. This is the Dominique Cosmetics, this is the Sweather Weather Palette, and I think this is my least favorite from this brand. I think it's so ugly. <laughs> but I do like the outside packaging, it feels like nice and textured, but the inside color story, it's like a cool tone moment but i don't know the colors are just ugly they don't scream sweater weather to me but i have it only because all the palettes i'm pretty much about to show you are completely discontinued from dominique cosmetics that's why i still have it otherwise i would have decluttered it long ago this is this is the dominique cosmetics transition palette this is literally what it's meant for just to be transition shades between each shadow to help you blend to help you bring colors together it's why dominique created it's why kristen created this palette it's good for what it is but for me who's not the biggest fan of like neutrals like this without having any shimmers this was like okay palette it was all right it's a palette that i don't really reach for that often if i'm honest we do have the dominique cosmetics this is the berries and cream palette my sister actually got this for me for christmas i did a review on this palette it has like only 400 views if that it was a horrible review like in a sense that like no one watched it but i was fine with that but i will say this was a cute palette and i'm gonna cherish this just because my sister bought it for me and that was very, very, very sweet of her. You have the Rustic Glam Palette from Dominique Cosmetics. Again, very beautiful, very fun, like summer vibes palette. And they no longer make this one, they no longer have this palette. They discontinued this palette and the Berries and Cream one as well. Have another discontinued palette. This is the Celestial Storm Palette from Dominique Cosmetics. I absolutely loved this palette. I thought it was so beautiful. I love the formula. They do crushed pearls to make their shimmers pop. So freaking nice. Mattes were beautiful, very color, very colorful color, very beautiful color story. And I think Dominique, I think Kristen did a really good job with this one. It's one of my few favorites one of my favorites from this brand. We have the Lemonade palette from Dominique Cosmetics. Um, my husband actually bought this full collection for me, but I never got a chance to review it. And this is one of those collections that have been discontinued, sadly. And um, this actually all got like, not recalled, but something got messed up where the pressed pearls were not the way they meant to. So they sent everybody a brand new collection. If you had owned this palette, they sent you a brand new palette. So I did have two, I did, I did give the other one away, but I still really, really enjoy this palette. I thought mine worked perfectly. We have the Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Coral Blossom palette. This is another discontinued palette, sadly. And um, it's cute. It's nothing too special about this other than I just, I think it's a cute palette. The Latte 2 palette. I loved this palette. I thought it was a great, I thought it was a great sequel to the first Latte palette. I think this is so beautiful. I love the neutral. I love the pastel shades. I think Kristen did a really good job with this one. I definitely battled the first two together and I think I actually prefer this one over the original Latte palette, but still very, very beautiful. I love this palette. 
and I believe that palette is discontinued, but they do have the Essential palette. This is actually still in stock over on Domini Cosmetics website. You guys can still find this. This is just more of a cool tone, neutral palette. I got this one in PR, so I thought it was really exciting, but like, it's just not really my color story. It's pretty, but it's not really for me. I believe this one is still in stock. This is the Moment palette. This was the first palette I got in PR from Domini Cosmetics, and I was so excited. This is a perfect summer palette. I really did enjoy this one, but this one meant a lot because of the fact that this was the first time Chris and Dominique sent me um, anything from her brand, and that still was just such a moment because this palette right here was the very first palette that I ever reviewed on my YouTube channel. This is the Latte palette. Now, she has seen some better days, but she is so well loved. This is my first palette that I ever reviewed on my YouTube channel. So I will always have a special place in my heart for this palette, even though she was very well loved. She's very dirty to me. This will always be a special palette because this was the very first palette I ever reviewed on my channel. Next, we do have the Jaclyn Hill. This is the Divine Neutrals. This is the collaboration with Morphe. I really did like this palette. I thought the formula was really nice, um, but I don't really go for it anymore. I just find that there's better neutrals out there. I'm not the biggest fan of like Morphe shadows, but I will say it's it's cute for what it was and it was fun for what it was. We have the Jaclyn Cosmetics Volt. This is the armed and, um, I think this is the armed and gorgeous palette. Yeah, armed and gorgeous palette. I really like this palette. I think it's perfect for like the fall season. Very beautiful. And I love the eye look that I created when playing with this palette. A lot of fun. Although I think one of the shades in here did fall out that I'd put back in, but it's still a really beautiful palette. Up next, we do have the Jaclyn Hill. This is the Dark Magic palette. And this is how the palette looks. It's cute, but I really don't see Jaclyn like in this palette. You know what I mean? Like I know these are supposed to be like all of her extras that she cut out, but I just don't see it for her because she is very much into neutral. She barely does like colorful looks, but uh, it's a cute palette but not my favorite. We have the Ring the Alarm palette, and this is like a burgundy color palette. It's okay. I used to really love these back in the day. I feel like it's so, it's so funny to see how much my taste has changed over the years. Then we do have the um, Blinged Boss palette, and this is how the palette looks right here. Damn, she really created a lot of freaking palettes. <laughs> I bet she made a killing with this collection. This palette's all right. The, 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 the alley now is not in love with it the way that the alley back then was. We have the Jaclyn Hill palette. This is the OG palette that made Jaclyn millions. And what's so funny is that I used to love this palette, but now that I look at it, it's so dull. And I think it's ugly, like I don't care for it anymore, but I'm gonna hold on to it for obvious reasons. But I look at it now going, why was I so in love with this? Like, I just don't get it. Remember when Morphe was that brand? Now I don't really care for any of Morphe's formula. I just find them to be just so, ugh. But I will say the Jaclyn Hill stuff from Morphe are the only Morphe stuff I own. I did get rid of every other Morphe product, including like the James Charles like sisters palette. Like I got the James Charles palette. I got rid of them all. I kept Jaclyn because I do really like Jaclyn. But um, yeah, this is an ugly palette. I don't I don't get the hype around this. And then we do have the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette. Now this one's a definitely a lot prettier. I do really enjoy this palette. I remember going to the Morphe store on the day this launched to get this and get the reveal up ASAP. And I will say this is a, a very, very, very beautiful palette. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I forgot that I had this Kylie Cosmetics palette. What? I forgot how cool this palette was. The, the outside packaging to the color store on the inside to the formula. This was a great palette. This is like the only Kylie palette, the only Kylie Cosmetics palette that I have. And they really did a good job with this collection. I was thoroughly impressed with this. Alrighty guys, we're down to our last drawer. Holy crap. I have been filming for five hours, guys. Five hours, because I have so many palettes, my God. Okay, so up first, we do have the Patrick Ta. This is the Major Dimension Volume 2 palette. Now, I did skip out on the Volume 3 because it's just an all-neutral palette, so that's definitely not for me. But here we have the Volume 2. I really, really enjoyed this palette, although I've been seeing people online saying that theirs are getting mold in it. I don't know what that's about. Mine is perfectly okay, but um, definitely make sure you check your palettes because y'all saw my experience with Lunar Beauty earlier. I don't know what that was, but this is what happens when you have a big ass collection. It's, it, it can happen. Cause like, well shit, I have a lot of palettes that I don't go through on a daily basis. So 
I wouldn't be surprised if one of my palettes did have something in it, but here we have the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Volume 2 palette. It's really pretty. We have the Patrick Ta, this is the Major Dimension Volume 1 palette. This was sold out for so long. No one could get their hands on this. What is this? Oh, just little bubbles, just little bubbles. That's fine. Should be fine, I think. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, don't turn into anything. Don't turn into anything, but yeah, that just has like little bubbles. You see that little bubbles everywhere. We're, that's that's fine. It's fine. It's fine, y'all. But yeah, I remember this sold out everywhere. So when I saw this in Sephora, I had to get it. I was so obsessed with this. I'm really glad I still have it, but we're just gonna pretend that that's just bubbles. Up next, we do have P. Louise. The rest are all P. Louise. I really do love the P. Louise palettes. They have phenomenal formula. I really wanted the Michaela X P. Louise palette, but there was uh, some issues around there where they were charging me six dollars more than the price listed on the on the website when i try to get a refund they said absolutely not so i just said cancel the order so that's why i don't have the palette i still have some things that came in because i couldn't cancel that order it was a big big mess but i still will definitely shop the brand because the customer service agent who took care of me was very 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 sweet so i'll definitely keep shopping the brand but here we have one of my favorite palettes from p louise this is the take it take the risk or lose a chance palette very beautiful perfect perfect fall palette and like i said the formula of p louise is just incredible really do love their formula we have the invest in yourself, babe. Like again, look at how pretty these are. Very, very, very beautiful. Great, great formula. I love the color story. We have the babe. It's all about those. A very beautiful like pinky palette right here. Love it, love it, love it. We have the say less and do more palette. Again, this is such a stunning, stunning, stunning palette. We have the what's your favorite position. This is a beautiful like purple palette. Okay, so we have All I See Is Signs. These palettes are massive. So this is the All I See's Are Signs palette. This is such a gorgeous freaking fall inspired palette. I absolutely love playing with this palette. Like the tones, I mean, like I get that she creates a lot of shadows, but they're pretty inexpensive. And I get that she creates a lot of shadows, but she creates a shadow for every color, but gives you all the different tones to go with it. So you can create the most beautiful looks. And I just absolutely love this palette for the fall season. We have the Money Shot palette. Again, another beautiful palette. And look at that. Do you see how gorgeous that is? Like legit, it's so big that more just pull out. That's why it's like so big and it costs a lot because that's why it's so big and it's pretty expensive because there are two different rows that you can get with this. So, ooh freaking beautiful. So we do have the royalty palette. Like, look at how cool, like nice and sand. And we open up, this is the color story. Again, another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color story. Have the droplet of magic. This is one of their newest Halloween launch. You take the key that comes with it to unlock the palette like so. So you unlock this, pull this little heart out. And then you're going to open it into two sided palettes. So you have one side right here super freaking pretty and then you have the other side right here i actually really ended up enjoying this palette far more than i thought i was going to i did a review if you guys want to check that out but like literally this is such a beautiful beautiful palette and then the last palette is the hocus pocus right here so here we have the front color story again such a gorgeous palette i had a lot of fun creating looks with this but the back my god the back on this one was my absolute favorite it is so freaking beautiful okay guys so after five and a half hours that is my entire eyeshadow palette collection i counted up i have 406 palettes sitting right here in front of me and i want to cut that down 99 of it is my color pop drawer so we're going to go through each drawer and we're going to declutter palettes and i'm going to do this a little differently because i just did a whole video where i showed you guys my entire eyeshadow palette collection so instead of doing that again this video i'm just going to kind of go through each drawer pull out the palettes that i know that i don't want to keep and kind of go over the reasons why switch it up just a tad since you guys just watched the whole video okay so we're going to ignore this drawer because this is a drawer of all the new makeup that I need to try. But here we have my Odin's Eye Cosmetics drawer. We have my like Halloween drawer. We have just a random assortment of palettes drawer. We have all of like my um, indie brands in here. We have more indie brand in here. 
these two drawers right here are just dedicated to my color pop so i'm really gonna go through here because i need to i need to you know condense this down just a little bit we have all my milk makeup in abh we have my blend bunny in bh and be perfect we have my just random sort of higher end all natasha denona pat mcgrath and huda beauty this is all um, P. Louise with two Patrick Tall, Dominic Cosmetics, and Morphe. So we're going to kind of go through. I'm going to tell you guys right now, everything you guys see in these drawers right here, I'm probably like not going to declutter because this is like more of like my hoarding issues that we guys that we see right here i don't really plan to declutter anything right here nor am i going to declutter anything from my glam light drawer so we're just going to mainly focus on all these drawers right here so let's go ahead and get started guys uh, all right guys like i said i wanted something a little different typically the last couple times i've done eyeshadow pile declutters i did a whole collection and declutter in one video now we're gonna do it differently where i'm just gonna be going through each drawer and pulling out the palettes that i know either i want to keep or not keep so we are gonna go ahead and start. I started out, I have my four Ofra palettes right here. I have my palette, I have the Empowered palette, the Beach palette, and the Luxe palette. I know for my, I know for a fact, I'm not gonna be decluttering these ones, so we'll go ahead and set these ones aside. If you guys saw, I just did a ranking. I ranked all the palettes that I tried in 2023, and I put these pretty low at the bottom. While the formula is actually really not bad, I just know realistically, I'm never gonna use something like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter these two. We have my palette that I created with Ofra Cosmetics. This is my project influencer. I'm definitely holding on to this. I really loved this little Lion King palette. I, I'm keeping. I did rank the Elf, the Elf Denim Days palette pretty low. It's actually really cute for what it is, but honestly, I know myself, I'm never really going to dig back into this. So I'm going to actually go ahead and declutter this one. I am going to be keeping my Queen Bee Colored Rain palette. These two Flourishes palettes, they're so freaking pretty. And while I may not always use them the most because, well, they're just too pretty to like touch and mess with, I'm also not willing to part with them just yet because they're just too pretty and I still want to like hold on to these ones. Keep this for the mere fact that you never know, maybe there's a day I want to do like a water activated colorful look. I'm going to want like a little palette like this and Kata Cosmetics has the best hydro palette. So we're going to hold on to this one. I'm trying to not make this a freaking collection video because I just did one, but we do have the Juicy Olive um, from Give Me Glow. We're holding on to this. Haven't really had a chance to play with the Graveyard Smash from Wicked Widow, so we're definitely holding on to this. We have another Floraces palette. Again, I'm going to be holding on to this one. And then, of course, we do have my Kaleidos with Angelica Neekfist. I'm definitely holding on to this one. Okay, let's move on to, like, my Halloween drawer. So we do have the Heather Austin's Resurgence with Unearthly. I'm definitely keeping this one. We do have my two Batty Bean. We do have my two um, Betty Jean palettes that she created with Trial Cosmetics. I'm holding on to these, although it really sucks because this one's really starting to crack. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to hold on to it. Let me show you. A lot of my shimmer shades are starting to crack and I don't know why. So if this whole palette starts to continue to do this, like if like the next two shades start to crack, it might be time to declutter it, which is really sad because I've only had this for a couple years, but it's just not wanting to last. We have the Unearthly Don't Be Jelly you're gonna hold on to. We have the Murky Waters from Ladybug, Ladybug Glow. I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. I have my two palettes from Teresa Is Dead. I'm gonna hold on to these two. Definitely will not part from the Rebel Rouge Lab Helen For You palette. I love this palette so freaking much. And um, yeah, not gonna part with this one just yet. Same thing, my two Alien Cosmetics, AKA Unearthly Cosmetics. I'm holding on to these two. We have the Creatures of Forever from Rebel. We have Creatures of Forever from Rebel Rouge Lab. Just got this in this pat, like just got this in two months ago. Definitely gonna be holding on to this one, super cute. We have the Cindy Grace in Tiny Marvels. This is actually Mel Thompson's palette that she did with uh, Cindy Grace before she passed. I'm holding on to this. My three Gourmand Girl palettes, I love these, so holding on to these ones. And then we have the Makeup Maniacs. Now, y'all, I only keep this because it's a Halloween palette, and I feel like it's so hard to find a Halloween palette nowadays. Like, more brands are starting to cater to it, but I know me, I'm never gonna use this palette. Like, I like other palettes that have better formula than this one, but I strictly hold on to it because it's Halloween, and I strictly hold on to it even more so because I like to do it in my palette rankings. So I think for now, 
This is gonna go in the maybe pile. This is my entire Odin's Eye Cosmetics drawer. I'm not gonna be decluttering anything from here. Like I said, I did an in-depth review of these over my eyeshadow palette collection video, but I did do a massive declutter of this back in August. So that's why I'm not decluttering any of these because these are my absolute favorite from the brand. We'll see where I come to next year, but as of right now, nothing's being decluttered. So I just wanna show you guys because this is part of the collection, but we're gonna hold on to this one so far. Okay, so this drawer is going to contain Nomad Cosmetics Game Beauty. It's gonna have a um, BH Cosmetics, NYX, and all, it will also have Alter Ego. So let's go ahead and get this started. So first we do have the Nomad Air. I ranked this so low in my palette ranking that I just posted yesterday. I know me, I'm never gonna realistically use a palette like this. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my favorite. I'm, I do like neutrals, but there's something about this just is so boring and I'm just, not a fan. So I'm actually going to go ahead and declutter this one. We have the NYX Ultimate Flamingo. I really wanted to love this palette, but it was so disappointing compared to the NYX Ultimate Paradise. The formula just wasn't what I wanted and expected. So unfortunately for me, because I just recently got this, I'm going to declutter. We're gonna keep the ultimate shock paradise. This is so good. Okay, so um, <laughs> that's pretty much what's gonna be decluttered from this drawer. Wow, this is gonna be a really fun video, isn't it? So the reason why is that this is all game beauty. I'm not parting from this. Alter Ego, really love these palettes. I have my Endangered Cosmetics, and then all of this is Nomad Cosmetics. I'm not parting from anything else from Nomad because I generally really do enjoy all these palettes. Mine is just that one that I decluttered. So this drawer is going to stay the same for now. Up next, we do have my BH Cosmetics, my Fantasy Cosmetics, and a lot more indie brands are gonna be found in here. So here are all of my uh, Fantasy Cosmetics palettes right here. I really do love these palettes. They, I think this brand is absolutely fantastic. The only problem I'm having is with this palette right here, my Bard palette. Um, one of the shades is really starting to crumble. And I keep trying to save it. I keep pressing it and every time I press it, it just wants to crumble even more. So I don't really know what to do with this one. I'll see if I can get it saved. If I can't save this, then we are going to have to part with this one eventually because I'm just not gonna keep like a ruined palette in my collection. But we're gonna hold on to this for now. Um, so I'm holding on to my Fantasy Cosmetics. We have Robbie Christie, my Game Beauties I'm keeping. These are my Ace Beauté palettes that I'm keeping. But I do have my BH Ice Cream ones holding on to these. I just ranked these ones pretty high up in my collection. But let's see what we have behind here that I can see if I can move out the way. So up first, we do have this uh, Makeup Revolution. This is the Forever Flawless Adventure Palette. I think she's cute, but I know me, I'm not gonna really use this. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare this one because I just know that it's not gonna get the love that it deserves. I'm gonna hold on to the e.l.f. one for now. I don't know how much longer she will survive, but I just really do love this palette because I really do love the Chipotle palette, but I don't know how much longer she'll survive my collection declutters. I'm definitely keeping the Ace Beauté Tropical Vibes. Same thing with the Uma Beauty. Really do enjoy these ones. I just got this Salem Cosmetics one, so I'm gonna hold on to this for now. Um, we do have the Chaotic Cosmetics. This is the Dreadful Dead palette. Now, I only was holding on to this palette because, again, it is a Halloween vibe palette. And I know I'm never going to play with this again. I'm never going to use this again. I strictly hold on to it for Halloween ranking. But I feel like that's not really enough for me to justify keeping it anymore because I just don't really care for the quality or the packaging of this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and declutter this one. Same thing with my Brainwash palette from Chaotic Cosmetics. I do like the brand. I thought this was a really fun palette, but I was strictly mostly holding on to it because of Halloween. Well, I do really like the formula in here. I just know that I'm not gonna really gravitate to this palette as much as I do other palettes in my collection. So for me, it's not enough for me to hold on to. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one as well. Now I'm I know, like I said, I'm running through these kind of quickly, but it's also because, like I said, I just did the palette collection video. I'm actually gonna be doing a makeup like declutter marathon where I'm gonna be putting both videos into one. So that's why this one will make make sense when you guys see that ultimate you got that's why this one will make sense when they're all combined into one keep going so up here we do have all of my melt cosmetics palettes right here now these are the melt cosmetics palettes that i generally really do enjoy so i'm going to hold on to these ones for now but i do know that eventually these are probably end up being declutter at some point as well because i just feel like they don't get as much love anymore so we're going to hold on to them for now but i feel like we're going to end up decluttering some of these in the future but here we have all of my abh palettes now i do have one that I definitely want to declutter, but let me show you these two up first. These two are my um, dose of color palettes. Now I was holding on to these because, 
well, I don't know. I was just holding on to these, but we, here we have the Cutting Edge. It's a really pretty palette, but realistically, I don't ever use this palette anymore. There's nothing wrong with it. I just have other palettes I do kind of prefer over this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have my Smoky Soray palette. Now I was holding on to this one for the longest time because I generally really do love the black shadow that is found in here but I just don't use it enough to keep it anymore because I have other palettes now that have amazing black shadows just like this one. So for me, as much as I really loved it for that black shadow, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. So we do have my Cosmos and my Soft Glam we're gonna be holding on to. My Amarizi we're holding on to. We have the Novu Norvina Subculture. And we have Sultry and Carly Bible. But the one I'm definitely willing to part from is I'm willing to go ahead and part from the ABH Norvina collection. Just because I know realistically, I'm never going to use this palette again. It's just so big for what it is. And while it's really pretty and I did have fun with this, I just feel like this should go to a better home. This should receive more love than what I could possibly give it. So we're going to go ahead and declutter this one. I also am going to keep so far the Jackie Ina Riviera in Fall Romance. We're going to hold on to these ones for now. Okay, so now we're moving on to one of my ColourPop drawers. And I know you guys are probably thinking, Allie, this is more like a collection video than declutter because you've barely decluttered a thing. Like, this is boring. Listen, I get it. <laughs> but I also had an idea in mind what I was going to be decluttering, not decluttering. So now we're moving on to my ColourPop drawer. Now listen, I have 99 ColourPop palettes. That is just ridiculous. 99 ColourPop palettes. Who's going to really go through all these realistically? So we are going to go ahead and start. So I do have all of my palettes kind of like color coordinated because I do think it looks really, really pretty. But I do want to let you guys know that there are some from here that I'm definitely willing to part with. So starting up, we do have this main squeeze palette from ColourPop. This is a watermelon vibe ColourPop palette. And you know, I don't even remember my thoughts on this. Truly, I don't remember my thoughts on this. I said that in that video that I had no idea what I thought about this palette. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. We have the ColourPop Ornate eyeshadow palette. This was really pretty. I did enjoy the looks that I did with this collection. I think I actually filmed it actually in this room was one of the first few times that I filmed in here and I first moved in was actually this collection. So while this is a really pretty palette, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the ColourPop, this is the Barquet palette right here. Very gorgeous palette. I love that there's actually no glitters in this palette. I love the match with the shimmer in them. You guys know that I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. But again, I don't show this palette as much love. It's a very gorgeous, gorgeous palette. I really loved it when I got it, but I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the ColourPop. This is gonna be the Grandeur palette right here. There is a pressed glitter in the center. This is a very beautiful palette. This is probably my favorite out of the three, but this is their old formula. They don't make their pressed glitters like this anymore, which I'm very grateful for, because these pressed glitters were very difficult to work with. I absolutely hated them, and I feel like it took away the value of the palette but again my tastes have changed over the years and I did also reformulate these but I'm still not going to really dip back in this palette so I'm going to go ahead and declutter this palette. We have the Out All Night palette from ColourPop. There's just little mini five pan palettes. Honestly I'm not the biggest fan of their five pan palettes. I just... I don't know. I just don't gravitate to these. I don't love these as much as I do. They're nine pan palettes or they're 16 or 12 pan palettes. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. We have the warm wishes palette again very beautiful five pan palette but i just don't really pick this one up compared to other ones i really did enjoy playing this when i got it but i just realistically don't use it enough so we're gonna go ahead and declutter this one gosh so we have the jingle on palette right here again this is another new palette they just recently launched for their holidays it's pretty it's cute but i just realistically don't use this enough so i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna pass this on. I'm keeping the Kate Clay Cool. I really do love this palette. So I'm gonna keep this one, the Winnie the Pooh one, the Twist the Slate one we're gonna hold on to. But we have the Candyland palette. Now I honestly don't really care for this palette. I don't remember what my thoughts were in the video. I think I even said the same thing. This was like not a well overwhelming palette for me. It did come with a little Candyland game in the box, but I paid for it. I wasn't sent in PR, but I just don't show this enough love. It's definitely not my favorite. So we're going to go ahead and pass this on. So I'm going to keep these three right here. Then I do have these little melt for you palettes. Now, like I said, I kept some stuff specifically designed for certain videos. 
I will never use this palette again. It's pretty, but realistically, I just won't use this palette again. I kept it to possibly do like your top 10 favorite palettes for Valentine's Day, but Valentine's Day is my least favorite holiday, if I'm gonna be very real with you guys. It is my least freaking favorite holiday. So I kept it just for that. And while it is a pretty palette, it hasn't seen love in a long time. So we're gonna go ahead and declutter that one. We have the Sealed with a Kiss palette, AKA the Swaka palette. Again, not my color story. I kept it specifically for certain videos and I was scared to let things go, but I just don't care anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and declutter this one. And then we have the 143 palette, AKA I Love You. It's pretty, but again, you have that pressed glitter and these are big glitter pieces that are in here. Definitely not my favorite, would not be using this palette again. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the three little Bambi palettes. At first I was going to declutter them, but then when I did my eyeshadow palette collection video, I saw how cute these were again. I really wanna play with them again. So we're gonna hold on to these ones. And now we have kind of this to go through to see what I wanna keep and what I wanna declutter. So I know that I have the Mandalorian palette, which I'm gonna hold on to. We have the Going Coconuts, one of my favorites still from ColourPop. We have That's Taupe. I just talked about how much I love this. Let's see, what do we have right here? This is the Deja Brew palette. I, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have my C3PO I'm gonna keep, my Little Ray Sunshine I'm gonna keep. We have Uh Huh Honey I'm gonna keep. We have Baby Got Peach. Oh, we have the Big Poppy one, keeping this one. But then we have Baby Got Peach. Declutter. I'm gonna keep Orange You Glad, Sage the Day. We have this one that is the Fresh Greens palette. Oh yeah, I like this one, I'm gonna keep this one. We have the Glow Getter palette. I actually got this in a mystery box. I am gonna go ahead and declutter this one. All right, we have the Tinkerbell one I'm holding on to. We have Meant to Be, Meant to Be. Oh yeah, I forgot how pretty this palette is. Oh, this is popping up. Oh no, that is popping up. Okay, we're gonna hold on to this one. Still gonna hold on to Just My Luck. We have Aura Out. Aura Out. Oh yeah, these ones are really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to this one. I definitely hold on to the Child, Entrance, definitely the Frozen one, Blue Moon, Lie Like You A Lot, Frozen, Just My Luck, and then let's see the Strawberry Shake. Mmm. Declutter. All right, then we have the ColourPop. We have the um, Darth Vader palette, definitely holding on to. And then we also have the Smoke Show palette. And I really like this palette. So we are um, definitely holding on to this one. All right, now I'm moving on to these little mini palettes. See, this is why I said trust the process, guys. Trust the process. So. If you guys haven't recently seen, I just showed all these palettes off in a video and um, I really do like these little palettes. I did a whole video where I reviewed all of the little mini palette quads for the horoscope collection. So we're gonna touch on that in just a minute, but I do have these little mini ones right here. So up first, we do have these cute little ones. This is the palette called Citrus Frizz. Now I never buy these ones. These ones always come in my ColourPop mystery box and these are really pretty, but realistically, I don't really use these anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. I see you baby palette, super pretty, but I'm a declutter. We have the little sorbet palette, super pretty again, but I'm decluttering. We have the palette on the mango. Again, a really, really pretty like orange square palette, but I'm a declutter. And then we have this cute little like going, we have this cute little coconut palette, super cute, but since I have the big size of the going coconuts, we are gonna go ahead and declutter this one. All right, then we have all my horoscope ones. I think it's um, the semi-precious Gemini one right here. This palette right here is just, I mean, can you guys see this? It's, it's crumbled apart, breaking. This one's starting to break too. There's no saving this one. So this one has to go ahead and just get decluttered. There's just, it's just, I hate opening up this at this point because it's cluttering, decluttering so much. And this is one of my favorite ones in this one too, surprisingly enough, because I love the color scheme, but we're gonna go ahead and declutter this one. When it comes to the rest of the horoscopes, some of these I really like, some of them I just don't care for like color wise. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of them out 
because these are officially going in my maybe pile because I don't know if I'm actually gonna keep these ones. So I'm gonna put these in my maybe pile. We will come back to this at the end to see if I really wanna keep them or not because realistically, I don't really use them, but there's still a part of me that like wants to have it because it's horoscopes. I had a lot of fun with it. There's some that are really pretty, great formula, but I need to be more realistic with myself. So here's this drawer. We definitely decluttered a lot from this drawer, but we do have another ColourPop drawer to go through. So let's go ahead and hit that one up. Here's my next ColourPop drawer. Let's start with this one right back here. So I ranked this one pretty low on my um, ranking list that I posted yesterday, only because I, I think this palette's pretty, but like I literally have this palette in like other palettes. I have this exact same shades and stuff like that. I also have no affiliation with the Winx Club. I have no idea who they are. So for me, I don't have an attachment. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. I love the Avatar Last Airbender series. So I'm going to hold on to this one. I have the Garden Variety palette. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. We have Avatar the Last Airbender. Definitely holding on to this. I am for sure keeping my Disney Mulan palette, of course. We have the Limoncello palette. You know, I actually was not the biggest fan of this palette when I reviewed it, and I'm still not the biggest fan. So for me, while it's pretty, it just wasn't what I wanted. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have Not A Box Chocolates. Really do love this palette, holding onto this. We have the Flirty Talk palette. You know, I think for now, I'm gonna hold onto this one, keep one Valentine's Day special palette so that if I do wanna do like light pinks and stuff like that, I could. So we're gonna hold onto this one for now. We have the Snow White palette. I'm definitely gonna be holding on to the Snow White palette. Malibu Barbie, definitely holding on to this one. We have the Sweet Talk palette. This used to be my favorite only because I loved this shade right here, but I feel like that's not enough to justify keeping this palette anymore. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter. Can you believe that? I'm finally decluttering this. I'm shocked myself. I think the reason I'm gonna be cluttering it is because I do really love the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Palette, which is like my replacement of this. Okay, so moving on, we have As Good As Gold. I'm holding onto this one. We have the Wild Nothing Palette. I really love this at the time, so I thought this shade was just so freaking pretty. But again, it's been a long time since I've used these palettes, like this is even barely showing up anymore the way that it used to. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have my Rudolph Red Nose Re Reindeers I'm holding on to, Liz McGuire I'm holding on to, The Witching Hour, Alice in Wonderland. We have my Haunted Mansion I'm holding on to, but then we have the Malibu and the Springs. This one's so pretty. I think I'm gonna keep this one for now because this one is just way too pretty. Powerpuff Girls, 1111, Star Wars, Hocus Pocus, Disney, and like all my big palettes. I'm gonna hold on to these for now, but I think we did a really great job of decluttering a lot of ColourPop so far. Okay, so up next we do have like my Blend Bunny Cosmetics, my Be Perfect, Adept, and whatnot. So here we have the Lore palette. Definitely holding on to this one. Absolutely love this palette. We have the Sugar and Grunge I'm gonna hold on to, Sickly Sweet I'm gonna hold on to, we have uh, Machine I'm gonna hold on to, we have the All Done Up I'm gonna hold on to, Blends, my favorite, we're gonna hold on to. Then we have Dollhouse. This is a pretty palette, but I don't really show this one as much love as it should get. So for the first time ever, guys, I'm actually gonna be decluttering a Blend Bunny palette. And I never thought I would because I absolutely love this brand. It's one of my favorite brands alongside Glam Light, but I just feel like I don't show this one enough love because it is more neutral and I just love Blim Bunny's like colorful palettes. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, declutter this one. We also have the Forget Me Not palette. You know, this is um, meant for like makeup artists that are out there because it's like a face palette. But I just, again, don't really show this a lot of love. It's actually ranked pretty low on my palette ranking of the year. So again, um, I'm gonna declutter this one. Then we have um, Beauty Baby palettes. I'm definitely holding on to these ones. These ones are just really good. We have the Made by Mitchell we're gonna hold on to. We have All My Be Perfect with Stacey Marie, the makeup artist. I'm gonna hold on to these ones right here. And then we have my little Adept cosmetic section. So at first we do have the Minka palette. Really do love this Minka palette. I'm gonna hold on to this one. We have the Amulet palette from Adept. I'm gonna declutter this one. It's pretty, but it's just not really a color scheme for me. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the beautiful Heather Austin palette, definitely holding on to this. 
And then we also have the um, arrow palette that I got this past year in a mystery box and we're gonna definitely hold on to this one. Look at me guys, I'm actually getting rid of brands that I love so much, but I'm trying to let go of my hoarding tendencies. So I think we're doing pretty good. All right, next we're moving on to the next drawer. I have my two palettes from Too Faced. I have my Pumpkin Spice and Italian Spritz. Um, she's cute. She's cute. I'm gonna hold on to these two. I do have my little palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I actually got this in a mystery box this, this past year and I forgot to do it in a ranking, honestly. Um, it's just a little, this is the Pillow Talk Luxury Palettes of Pop. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. I'm gonna keep my Man Eater, my Danessa Myricks, and my Urban Decay from Game of Thrones, keeping that one. Definitely keeping my Makeup by Mario palette. We have the Urban Decay Cyber Palette. This is pretty, but I don't really use it. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one. Okay, so here is my Pat McGrath, my Natasha Denona, and my Huda Beauty. So I have all three of these Star Wars palettes right here that I got this past year. I did a review on all three of these and uh, I actually ranked these ones to be pretty low in my collection just because the whole experience of Pat McGrath, Pat McGrath just was horrible, hated their customer service, and these are just very cheap for what they are. So I'm actually going to go ahead and declutter this Sith Seduction palette. We have the um, Divine, we have the golden one. This is like the um, C3PO palette. Again, not what I wanted, not what I'm used to. Like ColourPop has a better one for like a third of the cost. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the Divine Droid palette, and uh, again, I'm decluttering. I'm gonna hold on to the Natasha Denona. This is the Triochrome. I'm gonna hold on to this. We have the Love Palette from Natasha Denona. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. This is Sunset Palette. Really, really do like this one, so I'm actually gonna hold on to this one. All my other Natasha Denona ones right here, I'm going to keep for now. But let's move on to Pat McGrath. We have the Pat McGrath. This is the Celestial Odyssey Palette. I bought it last year, but I barely touch it, so. I'm gonna declutter. We have the Celestial Divinity Palette from Pat McGrath. Um, I think it's really pretty, but I don't really show it as much love anymore like I used to, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one as well. I'm gonna hold on to the Moonlight Seduction one because I really do like this one, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. This is just the normal, I guess, Mothership Palette. I'm gonna hold on to this one so far. We have the Star Wars Palette. This thing is so old. <laughs> like, honestly, it's starting to like dry and crack, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one as well. We have another Star Wars one. This is the Rise of Skywalker one. Very, really, very, very pretty. I really did enjoy this, but again, I just don't, I'm just having it just for collector's sake. And at this point, I just feel like I should go ahead and let this one go. Same thing with this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go as well, because again, I'm holding on to it for collector's sake and I don't actually really use it and I have no intention to. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one as well. I'm gonna keep the little mini Zendo palette for now. And then my sister, she did get me this one, so I'm gonna hold on to this one, along with the two Bridgington ones. And then we have all my Huda Beauty, and I'm not departing from any Huda Beauty, so. Definitely did make some space in this drawer, I'm proud of that. Okay, so up next, we do have all of my Dominique Cosmetics, my Jaclyn X Morphe, my Jaclyn, my ex Jaclyn X Morphe, and then we also have a Kylie Cosmetics at the very bottom. I'm not gonna declutter anything from this drawer. The biggest reason why is that they don't even make these palettes anymore. I think only like three of these palettes are still being sold. Like the Unconditional Love, the Transition Palette, and like the Essential Palette, everything else they don't sell anymore. They discontinued them, so I don't really know what's going on with that. So eventually these actually might end up getting moved to like a shadow box just because they are discontinued and like you can't really get your hands on them anymore and I kind of still want to hold on to them. But I still have my Jaclyn Cosmetics ones I don't want to let go of yet. So I just want to show you guys these because they are part of my collection. Same thing with like my P. Louise collection right here. So I have all my P. Louise palettes and two packed or tall. I'm not going to declutter anything from here either. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to reorganize my collection just a tiny bit because we do have a big ColourPop drawer I have to reorganize. I'm gonna count how many palettes I decluttered. I'm hoping that I decluttered at least 50 palettes, if not more. My goal is to go from 406 to hopefully 306, declutter 100, see what we came up with. But let me just quickly put this together, see what we have decluttered and go from there. All right guys, so um, I counted and we decluttered 64 palettes so far. I'm not satisfied with that number. I wanna declutter more, so I'm gonna be a little bit more harsh and if it hurts my feelings, it hurts my feelings. If I get sad, whatever, I wanna declutter more because it's so unrealistic for somebody to still have like 360 something palettes. I don't like that, so we're gonna declutter more. So we're gonna be a little bit more harsh this time. All right, so starting up. 
going back to these drawers one more time. We have my Ofer palettes right here. I'm going to keep the Falling In Love palette because that is my palette. I'm obsessed with that palette. We have the Lux palette right here. This is a really beautiful, like neutral eyeshadow palette. I love this palette. This is my second one that I have. because the first one I actually like kind of destroyed because I used so much of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the Beach Side palette. Again, another beautiful palette from Ilford Cosmetics, but realistically, I'm holding on to it because I just really love it. I'm not really using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the Empowered palette, a very beautiful palette. Again, one of my favorites from Ofra besides my own, but I'm gonna go ahead and declutter clutter this one. I'm going to keep the Queen Bee. I'll keep the Chaotic and the Essence. Obviously, I'm going to keep my own. And then I'm going to keep everything else in this drawer. But let's move on to the next one. All right. So up first, we do have my five game beauty. I'm still going to hold on to this. We have my Nomad, but there's one Nomad that I don't really have too much of attachment to, and that is their Japan Tokyo one. This is really pretty, but I was just holding on to it for a collector's item to have a whole collection, but realistically, I don't need to have a whole collection. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to declutter this one. Love these ones. Okay, so hold on to these ones. We have my two Endangered Cosmetics. I wish they would release more, but they have not. We do have these ones right here from Alter Ego. Now, since these are dupe palettes, we should probably go through these ones right here. We have the Sakura palette right here. Now, this is actually a dupe to the Natasha Denona. I need a Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette. Very beautiful, but since I have the original, I'm gonna go ahead and depart with this. This is the Canon palette. This is a dupe to the Natasha Denona bronze palette, but I do not I do not own that bronze palette, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and save this one. I really enjoyed this Mirage palette. This is the dupe to the Empower palette from Huda Beauty. I'm gonna hold on to this one though, only because I think the formula is a little bit better in this one. We have the Goddess pal palette. And this is a dupe to the Natasha Denona Gold palette, but I actually don't own that palette, so we're gonna hold on to this one. The Gourmand Girls Warriors Wear Pink, very, very beautiful palette, but I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. All right, let's revisit this drawer right here. So let's start with the ABH palettes. All right, so we have the Jackie Ina palette. I really do love this palette. I have great memories with this palette. I think it's really pretty, so we are going to hold on to this one. We have the Riviera palette. I had a fun time when I reviewed this, but I'm gonna let it go. I am, I'm gonna let it go. Fall Romance, I'm still gonna hold on to this one. We have the Amarizi one, Amarizi. Oh yeah, I forgot how pretty this one is. She was well loved. I'm gonna hold on to this one. We have the Sultry palette, but honestly, I was just kind of keeping it more for like a sentimental value because someone got it for me for my birthday one year, but uh, I'm never gonna use this again. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the Carly Bible. Again, I don't really show this one as much love. I got a lot of hate in that video. First time I experienced hate on the internet, but it makes me laugh now, but I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. Soft Glam is a classic, so we're definitely gonna hold on to this one. We're gonna hold on to Cosmos. We have Subculture. I did try this out. It did not really perform well for me. I picked this up at TJ Maxx, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, declutter this one. We have the Novu palette. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the Novu palette. I actually really do like this one, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. I'm gonna hold on to my Melt for now. All right, so I'm keeping on the Blends palette, but we have the Be Perf, we have the, um, we have this little, we have a Beauty Bay, we have the Earthly palette, but since I have a bigger form of this one, we're gonna go ahead and declutter this one. I'm gonna keep the witch one. I'm gonna keep the wilderness one. So freaking pretty, love this palette. Just like I love the Book of Shadows palette too. I'm gonna keep the Made by Mitchell just cause this will always have a special place in my heart because of Mikey. So I'm actually gonna keep this palette. I decided to part from the Naked Urban Decay Wild West just cause I wanted to have this, but honestly, when I look at it, it's really pretty, but I have these colors and other palettes. I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this one. And that's the only thing I'm decluttering from that drawer, so that's why I didn't bother pulling it out. I have the Party Animal palette from Laura Lee Los Angeles, but I was just holding on to it to have a full collection, but realistically, I don't need to have a full collection, so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. Same thing with my Boss Babe. 
I know realistically I am never going to go, I'm never going to use this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and declutter this one. Now I have this empty magnetic pan that has all of Laura Lee Los Angeles loose single shadows along with Teresa X Lethal Cosmetics. I'm going to go ahead and declutter this entire thing. I'm going to keep the, I'm going to keep the empty magnetic palette because I'm actually going to put my Odin's Eye individual shadows in here. So I'm going to keep the magnetic palette, but I'm actually going to declutter everything else that's in here. Okay. So I'm also going to go ahead and declutter the Juvia's Place Garden of Juvia. This is a really pretty pastel palette, but I actually do have quite a few pastel palettes in my collection. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. I decided to go ahead and declutter the Bard palette because I'm just tired of fighting this shade right here. As pretty as it is and how much as I loved this little palette because it's like a perfect fall palette, this shade just won't stop breaking and I'm just tired of dealing with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, declutter this one sadly. I've had this palette for years but I have no intention of really using it again. As pretty as it was and as much as I loved it, I have not picked it up in a very long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter the Uma Beauty Black Magic palette. Decided to go ahead and declutter the Smoke and Hot palette from ColourPop just because it's a pretty palette, but I'm not gonna really use this that often. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. We have the Play a Jewel palette. I got it in a ColourPop mystery box, but realistically, I'm not gonna really play with this one. It's a lot of shimmers, which is really pretty, but I need to be realistic myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and declutter the Kathleen Lights collaboration because this is an older palette. Um, I don't really use this. I got this in a mystery box as well. And there are press glitters in here and these are their old press glitter formula that I'm just not a fan of. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. All right, guys. So we are back again and I was in the middle of organizing and I was like, you know what? I'm still not really at my goal. Let me go through my collection one more time. So I pulled out all the palettes that I'm going to be decluttering that I said yes to originally in the beginning of the video, but now I'm just saying, you know what? Screw it. So let's just quickly go over these ones. So up first, you have the ColourPop. This is the In the Tree palette or Aurora out. It's really pretty, but it does have their old, old, old press glitters in here. I got this in 2020. I remember actually being at the zoo when this got launched in 2020 and it was right when COVID was happening. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. Next we have the ColourPop in a trance. This is part of that same collection, but again, it has those press glitters that I'm just generally not a big fan of. So we're going to go ahead and let go of in a trance. I kept this because I thought I was going to do some really fun makeup looks, but let's be realistic. I, I don't really do anything sci-fi like this. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of this retro pink palette. I'm sure that if I ever need any face paint, I can go find some other ones out there, but I'm going to go ahead and let this go because this has been since like 2020, 2019. And um, yeah, I think it's time. I think it's time to let it go. All right. We have the Saga of Freya from Odin's Eye. I really do enjoy this. It's really pretty, but realistically, I like some of their other palettes more. So I don't really gravitate to this one as much. Plus I have mints and other, and other palettes. I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. We have the Erd palette from Odin's Eye. Again, this is another beautiful palette, but I just don't really gravitate to it as much. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. We have the Dominique Cosmetics. This is the transition palette. This is only meant for transition shades. I personally don't find it pretty. I got it like in a little PR box and they sent it to me. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go because I generally, I'll never use it. We have CXC Beauty. I really do love the owners and this was a really cute palette. I did play with it for a little bit. I did enjoy this, enjoy this, but realistically, I just don't really use like little small palettes like this. It was really nice formula. I did enjoy it. So because it's a really small palette, I know I really won't use this as much. I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. I'm going to let go of the Dominique Cosmetics. This is like the now or never palette. It has a press glitter, which you guys know I'm not really the biggest fan of. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. I have the Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Unconditional Love Palette. Again, very pretty palette, but I hate the press glitters in here. They're just, they're not fun to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. Since I do have the full size Xenon palette from Natasha Denona, I really don't need to keep the mini one because it's the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. We have the Dominique Cosmetics Sweater Weather Palette. God, I think this is ugly. <laughs> I think this is ugly. I only kept it for my winter slash holiday ranking palettes. But again, I just think it's really ugly. Outside packaging is super cute. Inside color story, just it's not it for me. And so there's no point keeping it just for a ranking. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. I have the Melt Cosmetics Rustic Palette. I think out of all the melts one, this is like the one that I have left that I do think it's really pretty, but I do think the other ones that I have fit more of my color scheme. There's too many neutral shades in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. And lastly, for my palette that I am decluttering in this video, we do have Melt Cosmetics Gemini 2 Palette. This just isn't really my color scheme. 
I have it because I like being a hoarder and having full collections of palettes, but I think I'm kind of over that phase now where I have a full collection of brands. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this one along just cause I know I'm never gonna really use it. So let me go ahead and show you guys what my collection looks like now. Tell you guys how many palettes I decluttered and how many I kept. All right, so this is how my collection looks like now. I'm so excited for you guys to hear what the final number is. So here, I'm just gonna quickly go over everything. I have my drawer of just kind of random stuff of like, Florasis Essence Ofer Cosmetics. We do have my Odin's Eye Cosmetics drawer right here. Now we do have some empty spaces that I can lay those down. We do have like my Halloween indie drawer. We have my Nomad, my Game Beauty, my Alter Ego all up in here. We have my BH Cosmetics, my Alter Ego. We have my BH Cosmetics. We have NYX. We have Ace Beauté. We have Fantasy Cosmetica, Game Beauty all in this drawer. We have my Melt Cosmetics and my ABH. Definitely looks a lot better than what it did. We have my ColourPop drawer. Guys, look at this. Look at this. This is freaking insane. Oh my gosh. And then look at this. Looks definitely a little bit better. Definitely more room to put more ColourPop palettes eventually depending on how the brand's doing. <laughs> then we have my Blend Bunny and my Beauty Bay and Adept Cosmetics. We have my very empty, like high-end drawer. We have my Natasha Denona, my Huda Beauty, and my Pat McGrath. Again, this drawer is looking so much empty compared to what it was. We have my Dominique Cosmetics and Jacqueline collaboration with Morphe, and then my P. Louise and my Patrick Ta. So in total, guys, I had over 406 palettes, but I'm so excited to say that I decluttered a hundred palettes. That's right, I decluttered a hundred palettes. 42 of it was ColourPop. Let me show you guys what it looks like. So that's Koa. <laughs> so this is my drawer. This is my declutter clutter pile right here. There are over a hundred palettes in this declutter pile that you guys see right here. There are hundred palettes, 42 of it is ColourPop, but I'm so impressed and proud of myself because you guys know that I have been collecting some of these palettes for years, but I just realized that, you know what? I gotta let some things go. So I let go of like Blend Bunny. I've never let go of Blend Bunny before. So that's a first for me. I let go of Over Cosmetics, Alter Ego. We let go of... Nate Urban Decay, we let go of a lot of ColourPop palettes, Melt Cosmetics, Natasha Denona. We let go of all of my ABH palettes that I've had for so long. We let go of Laura Lee, Pat McGrath, Star Wars, Dominique Cosmetics. Look at all of this. I am so proud of how much I was able to declutter. So I started off this video with 406 palettes and now we are ending with 306 palettes, which still is a lot, believe me, I know that's still a lot, but this is so much better than what it once was. And I'm so excited to make my collection just a little bit smaller because realistically, nobody needs that many palettes. Like realistically, nobody needs that many palettes, but look at this. I'm so proud. Oh my God, I'm so proud. And I did declutter all of the horoscope collection. That was sad for me, but I just knew it was the best thing to do. So yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think of this declutter. Like I said, if you guys want to see my entire eyeshadow palette collection before the declutter, head on over to my video, which I'll have linked down below. That's where you guys can see all of these palettes in details, what they look like and everything if you want to. But this is my massive declutter pile, and I think it looks so good, and I'm very proud of my new collection. So with that said, that is it for today's video guys if you guys enjoyed today's video please make sure you guys give this video a cheeky thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already because i do post four to five videos every single week make sure you guys head over to my other channels are for life you guys get to see my cool wonderful adventures my amazing husband Corey. and as always the biggest thank you goes to these beautiful wonderful patreon members you guys see right here thank you guys so much for everything and to my subscribers and viewers thank you guys so much for being here whether you guys like this video you guys thumbs down this video you guys subscribed you guys did not subscribe either way thank you guys so much for being here i love and appreciate each and every single one of you so with that said guys i love you and i'll see you guys in my very next video